Michael. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is so good to see each and every one of you. And thank you for worshiping with us virtually, those who are connecting with us via audio or video screen. We are excited about that. But before we get started, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege that is ours to spend time in the Word of God. We are thankful that we woke up this morning, just little things we're grateful for. And so we're asking today that as we have an opportunity to spend time in the book of Genesis, you will guide our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I see the smiles underneath your mask. I am glad to be in the house of God just one more time, just, just for the fact to be able to have an opportunity to see each other, to connect with each other, but most importantly, that we can spend time in the Word of God. Now, this quarter, we're actually in, can you believe it, we're already in the second quarter of the month of the year, 2022. It is crazy how time has flown by, but I'm excited because we have this quarter an opportunity to look at beginnings an opportunity to check out the beginning of the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, and we're going to spend time there. This morning, we're looking at the, fo we're going to focus on the fall, the fall of mankind, the mistake that Adam and Eve made, and we're going to spend time looking at that. And one of the reasons why it's so important to allow um, the Bible, to open up the Word of God, to spend time in the Bible so that we can see God's plan for our lives. The Bible, we already know not this in the Bible, the, the idea that history repeats itself. And we, it's important for us to understand how to, uh, how to advance ourselves in the midst of an enemy, of Satan's attacks. And we're going to find those principles in the Word of God. All right, so our anchor text comes from Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 15. Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 15. And the Bible says in Genesis 3 verse 15, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This verse, the first verse of promise, is called the proto -euangelium. That is a Greek word for the idea that the first gospel promise, that John 3.16 is great, but before we saw, before we, Jesus spoke, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that it was echoed in the book of Genesis, not years after Adam and Eve made a mistake, but as soon as they messed up, God said, I'm going to put a plan in place, or I have a plan in place so that this will not be a mistake that will cost us eternity. And that's a blessing for me, and I want to be as practical as possible as we're studying the lesson today, because when we make mistakes, I don't know about you, but I have a tendency to have to wait some time before I really want to confess, or I don't want to hide out, or, or I, it's, it's, you know, it, it always goes back to when I'm thinking about God and how um, we treated our um, young people. And I'm glad my son's not here, because I can tell this story, and he's going to get embarrassed. I hope he doesn't re listen to this. But when he was little, he would be playing, and he was trying to transition from um, diapers and actually going into pull-ups. And, and it would be so funny. We would be playing, and all of a sudden, he would run and hide in another room. And I would say, why would he hide in another room? We're just playing. We're having a good time. And I would go and find him, and he would be in the corner shaking. And I would say, son, what's wrong? He said, daddy, I, I, I used the bathroom on myself. And the crazy thing was, it's like, listen, I'm here to help you get cleaned up. You don't have to hide your mess. And a lot of times, that's what we do as humans. That's not just a condition that stops as when we are toddlers, but, but when we make mistakes, we have this natural tendency to hide. But God is saying, I, when you make mistakes, and I know that you will, I want you to come to me so that I can help you get cleaned up. And that's what we find in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. God is saying, I recognize the mistake. And I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to be mad at you. I'm not going to zap you out of existence. But what I'm going to do is do whatever I can to ensure that you are cleaned up. And so we go to the story. that You guys heard the story. You know it. We're going to examine it a little bit more. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 16, one chapter to the left. And the Bible says, verses 16 and 17, the story of God speaks to Adam and Eve, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. This is God speaking to Adam now. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day you will eat of it, you will surely die. Before Eve was created, God speaks to his firstborn son. He connects with Adam and says, hey, listen, 
I've created everything that you have, and everything that has been done, it is good. But God says there is some restrictions, there are some parameters. And the reason why this is so important for us to understand is because this was designed so that Adam could live forever. And not just so Adam could live forever, but he could live forever in re right relationship with God. And this is going to be consistent as we look throughout the Bible that we have this tendency as a result of this fall that we want to try and live forever without the, the, the um, connection with God. But God is saying, hey, listen, I'm going to give you everything you want, but there is a condition. And that condition is don't eat from the tree the knowledge of good and evil. Because when you eat of it, you will surely die. Now let me ask you a trick question. What did Adam know about death at this point? Nothing, why didn't he know anything about death? Death did not exist. So wait a second, now you're telling me that death did not exist. So God is telling Adam about something he could not comprehend. So how would he understand this command from God? By obedience, or he, he, there was no way he could fully comprehend the command of death because he'd never experienced it. So what Adam had to do was to trust God that he knew something that Adam did not. And this is why this is so critical as we're understanding this concept. Even in a perfect environment, we had to have faith in trusting God to know and do and see things that we could not see. And so it's important for us as we're going through this journey of life and we're talking about living an unrealistic faith experience, we have to know faith is trusting God even when life does not make sense. And that's not a sin condition. It's the way that God set this relationship up that we should trust him even though we can't trace it. Understanding some moments, and some of us may say, well, God, I don't understand. God does not always give us all the details. Hate to break your bubble. I hate to, to, to get you frustrated, but God does not always give us all the details. He gives us the destination. And the destination in this case was that God wanted Adam to live forever. And this is the very next verse. The Bible says, and it's not good that man should live alone. Wait a second. Notice the connection. God did not say, Adam, I want you to procreate at this point, even though that was part of the goal. God did not just say, Adam, I want you to have a phenomenal spouse, and even though that was one of the things he wanted. But the focus of Adam and Eve being together was so that they together could encourage and strengthen and remind each other of the plan God had for their lives. And so for those of us who are married and those who are thinking about marriage, you want to make sure that your spouse, your partner, is the one who is making sure you are doing what God called you to do so that you can live forever with him, not just now, but also for eternity. So the lesson brings out this phenomenal point that the dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast out to the earth, and the angels were cast out with him. Adam could not understand or comprehend the idea of disobedience, but he was aware that there was some type of activity that was going on that was counter or contrary to the word and the will of God. Notice what Patriarchs and Prophets, page 53, says about this situation and the serpent. In order to accomplish his work unperceived, Satan chose to employ as his medium the serpent, a disguise well adapted for his purpose of deception. The serpent was then one of the wisest and most beautiful creatures on all the earth. It had wings and while flying through the air, presented an appearance of dazzling brightness, having the color and brilliancy of burnished gold. Can you imagine? Of all the things and animals Eve and Adam could see, they saw this beautiful, shining, bright, just moving majestically through the air, this image, and this is the one the, ser the, the, serpent, the serpent, the Satan decides to use. Notice, Satan does not attempt to present himself as an enemy to the Word of God. In fact, when God spoke with Adam, excuse me, when Satan shows up to Eve, he does not argue with the woman. He, he shows up in this brilliant, delicate, uh, and it just, isn't it so crazy that the devil does not change his tactics? 
I mean, if we weren't in church and if you didn't think so highly of me, you, you probably would be surprised at the times I messed up. The times where it seems like things that you know you shouldn't be doing, but it was so shiny and so nice. And we all do the same thing. It's that idea that the devil presents sin as so, and let me be honest, sin is fun. Think about it. You wouldn't do it if you didn't like it. But the idea here is how do we contrast what the devil presents versus what God's plan is for our lives? So we contrast two, two conversations. The first one, God spoke to Adam, where the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 16, and we read it earlier, and the Lord shall command the man, saying, of the tree of the knowledge, the tree of the garden, you, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day you eat of it you will surely die. Well, Satan comes and he shares another conversation. Here we see on the right-hand side what Satan says. It's, the Bible says, and he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you will not eat of every tree in the garden? Satan does not begin with an all-out assault on the Word of God. He begins by planting seeds of doubt. Subtle things to question, is God really true? Do we have an option to believe alternative facts? You will not surely die, he says, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, if we parse out what Satan is saying to Eve, we can see there's a lot of truth in what he's saying. Is it true that God knew that when she ate of it, your eyes would be open and you would be like God, knowing good and evil? Yes. But here's the challenge. When we really examine what Satan says to the woman, everything that God did or created in those first seven days when God started time, God said at the end of each day, it was what? Good. You also told me earlier that Adam and Eve did not understand or could not comprehend this concept called death. And so what Satan says is that you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Up to this point, God only gave them good. And so all Satan could really entice them with was the idea of knowing evil. And this is the crazy thing about sin, is that Satan presents only things that can hurt us and can harm us, and we actually have to trust and believe whether God was, what God is saying is correct. And so can you imagine walking through the garden, examining the different pieces of fruit, getting to the middle of the garden, watching this flaming, dazzling serpent fly in the midst of the air. And all of a sudden, he now begins to talk in your language. Did God really say you shouldn't eat from this tree? Don't you know he'll know? You'll know good and evil. And here we see why what God said don't do, Eve looked at the fruit. And the Bible says that it looked just like any other fruit. It was pleasing to the eye. It was desired to make one wise. And, and the Bible says she took of it and she ate it. You know, the only challenge with this text is some of the times when I, when I read, initially when I read the text, this idea of eating this apple or eating this piece of fruit, that the sin was grabbing the fruit and taking it. But, but the Hebrew says something different. That in a closer examination, the idea was when she thought in her mind and created the activity in her mind, it was okay in her mind that before she touched it, she already sinned. 
And that's consistent with what Jesus said when he's talking about adultery, that if you just lust with a woman in your mind, you've already committed sin. And so we have to be careful, and this is the reason why we have to guard the avenues of our souls, because it's in the mind where we make decisions for God or for the enemy, and our actions simply follow what we believe. So we go on to say, the lesson brought out this great point, um, Eve, in a sense, replaced God. Eve behaved as God was no longer present and had been replaced by herself. The biblical text alludes to this shift in personality. Eve uses God's language, Eve's evaluation of the forbidden fruit. She saw that it was good, and God remind, which reminds, God, reminds us of God's evaluation of his creation where God saw and it was good. And this is the danger and the reason why we have to be careful when it comes to studying the Word of God is because when we choose to go outside of God's will for our lives, we examine sin and we look at sin and we say, ah, it's not that bad. And we say, God, you really don't know what you're talking about. God, I, I see what you said about the commandments, but, but, but they really don't understand. You really don't understand the situations that are going on in 2022. And so I become the, the, the arbiter of truth and justice, and God, you need to take a back seat. And so what happens is that notice Satan, sac- Satan tax attacks on two major areas, and these are the same issues and areas that we deal with even today. The idea that death and not, excuse me, Satan attacks concerns two issues, death and the knowledge of good and evil. While God clearly and emphatically stated that their death was to be certain, but wouldn't die, certain, they wouldn't die, all but implying that humans were immortal. The idea that we can live apart from God, that we don't need God to have to, 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 to live and move. And this is, isn't this the same idea that we see in so many um, false religions, that we can kind of do what we want? We can say what we want, we can respond how we want, and we can end up in the right place and not realize that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. These two temptations the lesson brings out, that of being immortal and being like God, are at the root of the idea of immortality in ancient Egyptian and Greek religions. The desire for immortality, which they believed was a divine attribute, obliged these people to seek divine status as well in order, as they hoped, to acquire immortality. The idea, the thought, the concept of ability to live forever does not happen without the one who gives us life. And we shift gears and find verse number seven of Genesis chapter three, where the Bible says, and the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Did you know the reason why Adam and Eve chose fig leaves? Wasn't because they were the biggest leaves in the garden, but actually these were the ones that reflected the most light. The covering of God was no longer around them, one that emanated light. And so what they did is they said, we're going to try and mimic a covering that God provided for us. And the crazy thing about sin is sin always demands a covering, but it will never, ever be sufficient enough to cover our sins. And over and over again, we try to cover ourselves with, by, by, by lie upon lie, adding another lie. And we find ourselves getting so caught up in a sparrow that we end up like Adam and Eve, hiding from the one who wants to give us life. And so the crazy thing is, is that the Bible says in verse number eight, right after they hid, that they heard the voice of of God. What a God that we serve. I got to be honest, this this is, this is Sabbath school, it's my therapy session. (laughs) Brother Jones, I, I walked in the house this week and I realized there was a hole in the drywall that I who purchased the house didn't put there. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe there was some type of earthquake or there was some, clearly, clearly nobody who lived in the house would have done something like that. But after discovery, I found that one of the two people that I birthed, and I didn't birth, but you know, I, I was there when it happened, you know, put a hole in the wall because they were frustrated and angry. 
And I had to sit there. And, and, and anger was bubbling up over me until I thought long enough, and I thought about 30 years ago, that my dad, who had three boys, had something like that happen to his house. And, and, and I thought about and, and the, the idea of payback, and I, but I was still angry. I got to be honest, I was still angry because this was my house. This is my dad's house. You know what I'm saying? It's mine now. And I thought about this text, and I realized I would have not gone in the garden and said, Adam and Eve, where are you? I would have pulled out a belt. I would have been like, get yourself over here. <laughs> but this is the difference between me and God. Where God extends grace in our greatest moments of need. And notice how he does it. He asked the question, Adam, Eve, where are you? Now, doesn't that sound crazy? He's walking to where they are, and he asked them, where are you? He knows where they are, or else he'd be going in a different direction. So why would God ask a question like that? That's the same way he asks questions of us even today. When he asks us questions that we know the answer to, it's a point for us to begin thinking and considering where we are in our relationship with him. So when we begin to think about why he's asking us the question and where we are, we have to, have to deal with the fact that maybe something I did caused me to look or to make a decision to, let, me, let me read it the way I wrote it. It says, God knew the answers to the question. His questions were asked for the benefit of the guilty to help them realize that what they have done and yet at the same time lead them to repentance and ultimately to salvation. From the moment humans sinned, the Lord was working for their salvation and redemption. God in the midst of our sins finds creative ways not just to call us, but to go to where we are and bring us into right relationship with him. I wish I had time to kind of tell and discuss how the different things that happen and the different um, um, curses, the different, but go, to, go with me to verse number 21. It's not on the screen. Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 21. One of the reasons why I love this conversation and this, this situation with God, what God does with, with him and um, Adam and Eve, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 21, the Bible says this. This is what I love about God. And unto Adam and his wife did the Lord God made coats of skins and clothed them. God, after finding and redeeming Adam and Eve, the Bible says, remember, what did they try to cover themselves with? Fig leaves. God said what you tried to cover yourself with was not enough and never will be. In fact, the Bible says all of our righteousness is as filthy what? Filthy rags. And so what we try to do in and of ourselves will never work. But Bible says that God covered Adam and Eve with coats of skin and clothed them. What God was doing in this story, this redemptive process, is foreshadowing the fact that one day another sacrifice was going to need to be made. A sacrifice that you could not provide, and the God who did no wrong was the one who made a sacrifice for the very first time Adam and Eve understood what death was. And that was to foreshadow the fact that one day soon, and closer now than ever was before, Christ is going to come back and give us those robes of righteousness to cover us with the blood of Jesus Christ so that we can go home and live with him in peace. One day soon, God is going to put his heel on the neck of the enemy. No more time to deceive, no more opportunities to cause death or destruction. One day soon, Christ is going to break through the clouds and we're going to see him in peace. I want to ask for forgiveness for all of my sins so that when he comes, he can look at me and say, well done, now good and faithful servant. I want you to be there as well. God, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for the chance to look and see how you tried to love us and redeem us, even from our first parents, in spite of their sin, Lord, how much you love them. And I pray that today that you will awaken in us 
an area and a time and a place where we can have room in our hearts for you so that you can come in, transform us from the inside out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, Oakwood University church family and friends. Welcome to This Week at the OUC. I'm Isaiah Goodridge. And I'm Simone Vaughn. We are once again so excited that you've joined us today for our worship experience. Please tell us where you're joining us from in the chat, especially if it's from overseas or if this is your first time. We hope that you will be richly blessed by today's service through our preaching, teaching, music, and children's ministry. Today, Pastor Devlin R. Snell will continue his sermon series entitled, Get Unrealistic. Our special musical guest will be Samira Bowden. Pastor Mark Raphael will also share his Oaktown children's ministry. Invite a friend to tune into the service. Join us at 5 p.m. today for our Zoom Sabbath Afterglow program as we review the Sabbath School lesson with Elder Ronald Lang. If you would like to join us, please use the meeting ID 248-004-3316, and the password is 4321. Prayer opens special treasure, so if you would like to request special prayer, please feel free to fill out our virtual connect card by visiting OUCSDA.org forward slash connect. For emergency prayer available 24-7, please call 256-837-1255, extension number 197. Also, please feel free to join our daily prayer call at 6 p.m. On Sundays from 9.30 to 10 a.m., the OUC prayer line will feature Mothers in Prayer, hosted by Hadassah Dalrymple. The prayer line number is 605-475-4120, and the access code number is 848-3381-POUND. The church office is open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and on Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. We ask that you continue to wear a mask and maintain social distancing when visiting the church office. The Oakwood University Church Market, located in the Oakwood University Church Family Life Center, is open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It will close from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. and then reopen from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. It will be open from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Fridays. We invite you to stop by and pick up your vegetarian food products at a very reasonable price, as well as your Oaktown merchandise. You can also order your Oaktown gear online at OUCSCA.org forward slash shop. If you love Oaktown, rock the gear. The Conscience and Justice Council devotionals for 2022 entitled, Let Justice Roll, Biblical Devotions on Conscience and Justice are now available in the Oakwood University Church Market. Many of our members have contributed to this devotional, so why not pick up a copy to support them? Our Bible 101 study with Dr. Toussaint Williams will meet on Monday, April 11th, 2022 at 6 p.m. For the Zoom information, please email info at OUCSDA.org. Our next weekly food distribution will take place on Wednesday, April 13th at 11 a.m. in the Family Life Center parking lot. All are welcome to drive through to receive assistance. Tabitha's Corner, our clothing and non-food distribution center, is open on Mondays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the OUC Family Life Center. You can drop off items in good condition, as well as pick up any other items that you may need. For more information, please contact the church office at 256-837-1255, extension number 100. Our virtual prayer meeting will continue Wednesday, April 13th at 7 p.m. Pastor Rafael and Oaktown will have a message for our children. You may join us by visiting our YouTube and Facebook media platforms. 
teenage girls from the 9th to 12th grade. Join us every third Friday of the month from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. in room 109 of the Family Life Center for The Real. This meeting is sponsored by the OUC Adventist Youth Ministries and The Attic. You can also attend via Zoom. The meeting ID is 822-604-89620 and the passcode is 489-320. Young adults, you're invited to join us for our weekly Friday Young Adult Zoom Bible Study at 8 p.m. If you would like to join, please use the meeting ID 948 6252-9844 and the passcode is 707-877. We also have a Young Adult Prayer Warriors meeting and Pray Zoom every Saturday at 6 p.m. The meeting ID is 917-9395-2065 and the passcode is 144000. As we continue to experience grief and loss in our families and our church, the OUC Grief Support Ministry will meet virtually on the second and fourth Sundays of each month. For more information, email griefsupport at OUCSDA.org. Next Sabbath, due to Oakwood University's Alumni Weekend, we will not have a service here at the Oakwood University Church. However, you may view the Alumni Weekend service on our OUC YouTube and Facebook platforms. We will resume our regular Oakwood University Church services next Sabbath, April 23rd. Please remember the families who have lost loved ones during this week. We also want to remember those who are sick and shut-in in our church family. Please keep them in your prayers, send them an encouraging card, or give them a telephone call to check on them. And once again, we've reached the conclusion of this week at the OUC. If there are any church events that you would like to have mentioned in this announcement segment, please feel free to email us at info at OUCSDA.org. Also, please remember to stay connected with us by visiting our website at OUCSDA.org or by following our social media platforms to know what is happening at our church. And if you, yes, you, want to subscribe to our weekly newsletter, you can scan the QR code on your screen, or you can go to tinyurl.com forward slash OUC newsletter. May God continue to bless you and have a happy Sabbath. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to the Oakwood University Church Worship Experience. I am Pastor Paul Goodrich, and with me for the first time here at the Praise first Cafe time. Yeah, first time. Yeah. is the Dr. Malcolm Taylor. <laughs> the. <laughs> good yes, morning, Doc. Yes. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. I'm, I'm just so happy to be here. I'm just excited. <laughs> this is the day the Lord has made. It's the Sabbath. It's Absolutely. sunny. Yes. A little bit cold, yeah. but I'm excited. <laughs> Listen, man, you know, you talk about a little bit cold. So yes. I, I want to welcome our uh, viewing audience, and yes. especially those who have joined us early. <laughs> but but listen, Doc, uh, you know, as I go through to see where people have joined us, I, we, we have Dr. Desreen Bogle from mm. Barbados. Hey. Dr. Ruth Douglas from St. Martin. Uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, Andrea uh, Busi from St. James Paris in Nevis. Welcome. We have B. Stewart from Tobago. Now, is there, do you, do you note a pattern here? I see that. Barbados, St. Yes. Martin. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> I don't know about you, but it was like 35 degrees here. when I woke up this yeah. morning. So. <laughs> <laughs> They're where I want to be. <laughs> exactly. Amen, amen, amen. So welcome, welcome those of you who are watching, especially if you're from outside of the United yes, States. Yes, yes. We also have uh, Helen Kelly. She's from Houston, Texas. Well, if you're noticing the pattern here. <laughs> and uh, we have Vanessa Brandt. We, we actually have Sarah Andrews in California and Edward Scruggs from St. Louis. Yes, oh, yes. All uh -huh. right. Welcome, welcome this morning. If you see my pattern, I'm right here in the 50 states. <laughs> good. Yes, good. yes, yes. So we also want to wish a happy birthday to a number of people who are watching online. Yes. As well as those within our church congregation. <laughs> so Joel August, I mm -hmm. uh, want to say happy birthday to you. Jerry Ross. 
Happy birthday to you. Lancelot Griffith. Brother Griffith, happy birthday. Yeah. Dr. Eurydice Osterman. Oh. Happy birthday yes. to you. And Latonya Wilder, happy birthday. Happy yes, birthday. yes, yes. And I would also like to say happy birthday to Teddy Howard mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Michaela Jones. Okay. These uh, celebrate on the 6th. And Jeremy Ross and James McGriff Sr. on yes. the 7th of April. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Yes. And celebrating today. Okay. Uh, birth, Sabbath greeting. All right. Uh, happy birthday to Caliste August. August. Oh. Uh, happy birthday to you. Uh, Dr. Lisa Dalrymple. Yes. Happy birthday. Mustafa Johnson Lynn. Happy birthday. Marion Joseph. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. James Osborne. Uh, Gabriella Pognon, happy birthday. And Michaela Winter, happy birthday yes, to you. Yes. But I know that we typically celebrate those who have birthdays of past or today. Yes. But since you're here. Okay. Since you're here. <laughs> And since it's significant. Okay. What's the... Uh, 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 on the 11th. Something's happened uh, on the 11th. Uh, on the 11th. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, li listen, church family, th th this man here, this young man here, turns 50 Ooh. on April the 11th. So yes. we want to say in advance, yes. happy birthday, Yes, Doc. can we flip it? <laughs> can we? Oh, you want to be five again? Well, well you know. <laughs> oh, yes. man. But we also have some anniversaries. Yes, 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 some anniversaries. We have Alfred and Claudette Rowe. Uh, April tw April 3rd is their anniversary, mm -hmm. Happy 57 anniversary. years. Mercy. We have Arthur and Sonia uh, Bowen. On Rogario April Bowen? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. On the 6th, 34 years. Yes. And then we have Rosalind and Tony Fields. April 6th, 20th, it'll be their 20th uh, anniversary. Happy anniversary. Yes, happy, happy anniversary. anniversary. Yes. So listen, we know that there are other birthdays and anniversaries that... Um, we may not be aware of, or we may not have time to acknowledge, but yes. please go ahead, put them in the chat. Uh, let our online community celebrate with you. And to all those who we have missed or wasn't able to get or weren't aware, happy birthday, happy anniversary. Yes, to yes, yes. Happy birthday to you all. All right. Well, it looks like I think they're ready for um, our service. Yes. Um, yes. I, I'm excited. Uh, Pastor Snell will be preaching uh, mm -hmm. a word. We're continuing our Get yes. Unrealistic series. Yes. 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 That's been awesome. I, and I know there's a special announcement, right? Yeah, it, it is. It is. And I'm getting excited for that special <laughs> announcement. I want to know. I want to know. Absolutely. So yes. we, have, we, we have to wait like everybody else in terms mm -hmm. of Pastor yes. Snell yes. to share that special announcement. Yes. But before. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no. but before we get started, we'd like for you to share this, right? Share it with somebody. Mm -hmm. Put it on mm -hmm. your Facebook, with your Facebook page, share it. Yeah. Uh, you can even call somebody. We can go back and call someone and say, hey, join us today because we have a power pack Sabbath. So please share with your family members, mm -hmm. friends, coworkers, yep. and everyone you know. And we're about to begin our worship service, but yep. we have a baby blessing. Yeah. And so we'll go to that and we will see you right after our worship service. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We're very excited today to have a baby dedication as we present this gorgeous little Aubrey Blake to the Lord this morning. I want to just say this to you, Sister Washington, and to Amari. The word in Proverbs 22 and verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart. But one of the things that the Bible says is that there is a way that a child should go. In other words, when it comes down to spiritual things, those aren't things that ought to be made optional. It ought to be something that is directed and facilitated. About a week ago, I was over in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And when I was walking around the, the, the cabin area, I noticed that there was a family coming out of the one, one of the cabins. And the entire family had the University of Tennessee paraphernalia on. There was a granddad that had Tennessee stuff on. There were parents that had Tennessee stuff on. There were small kids that had Tennessee stuff on. And so I began the process of engaging them in conversation. 
And one of the things that the granddad was so proud to be able to share, he says, we've got four generations of Tennessee fans in this cabin this weekend. And one of the things that the granddad was very proud about, he was able to say that I raised my children as fans and my children are raising their children as fans. In other words, the little kids didn't even have a choice about what team they were going to cheer for. That decision was made by those that came before them. They established a legacy. They established a, an expectation. And as I engaged them in conversation, I began to ask, I was like, you didn't even allow them to choose whether or not they wanted to root for Alabama or Auburn. You made that decision for them. They said, we didn't force it upon them per se. But the kids said, we simply made the decision to choose based upon what we saw our parents doing. And one of the things I want to just share with you is that when it comes down to godliness, I don't want you to let Aubrey grow up in a loose religious environment and just come to the place where she decides for herself. But through your teaching, through your preaching, but not just through what you say, through what you do, what she daily beholds, that's going to help make the decision for her. And I need you to know, friends of mine, that the most important thing that you can give Aubrey, it won't be a sweet 16th birthday party, it won't be a college education, it won't be the keys to a car when she graduates. The most important and critical thing that you can give her is to give her Jesus. And when I say that, I don't just mean bringing her to church on occasion, but making sure that Jesus Christ is the fundamental element she's exposed to each and every day. And so Amari, that requires you to show leadership. And even as you begin this journey as, as a co-parenting team, Amari, I want you to operate on the highest possible threshold of fatherhood. It's not enough to just pay child support or to be there on the weekends. Children need a daddy every day. You've got to be engaged. You've got to be there. You've got to make mom's load as light as humanly possible so that Aubrey never grows up with stress or friction. I want to encourage you, Sister Washington, to make sure that as you all begin this journey together, that you always keep her best good at the forefront, that you would never allow your personal differences to get in the way or to obstruct or create a stressful environment for her to grow up in. I need you to know it may be challenging on the way, but if you submit to God, and if you submit to God, and you consistently present her to God, you can create a nurturing environment, one that is hospitable, one that lends itself to her knowing God, to her walking in the ways of truth, and not having a despiteful attitude toward the things of God. And so today, as we present Aubrey to the Lord today, I want to invite you to take some vows that you'll affirm by saying, I do or I will. Today, as you present Aubrey to the Lord, do you acknowledge that you are not an owner of this child, but that you're simply a steward of her gifts, her talents, and her potentials? As we present her to the Lord, would you make a covenant today to make sure that her first church is at home? that you would pray with her, praying for her, sharing the things of God with her behind closed doors and having those things cemented when you bring her to church. Lastly, if there were ever to be an idol in your home or anything that have a, would have a strong influence to draw her away from the Savior's side, do you make a covenant to not even allow the sun to set before removing such a thing from your home? Lastly, to the grandparents and to the friends and extended family, do you make a covenant to stand with Sister Washington and Mari and Aubrey? Would you encourage Aubrey with your words, with your example, with your prayers, and where, where possible and where appropriate your financial gifts? If you will, just say, I do. At this time, we want to offer a prayer of dedication, and we're going to see if little Aubrey is going to let me hold her. If not gonna give her back to mom and we're gonna pray from a distance let's look to the Lord together father in heaven Lord we come before you with Thanksgiving because we recognize that every child born is a miracle from you we realize that from even before conception 
you assigned a purpose to Aubrey. And so, Father, my prayer for her today is that she would be anointed with the power of the Most High. And Father, I pray that you would set apart for her purposes that are high and holy and that are beyond even her own choice. I pray that you would run ahead of this child and that you would order every single step that she shall ever take. Lord, would you choose every teacher, every friend, every associate, every influence. I pray that you would even run ahead into her adult life and that you would choose the husband if you should delay her coming that she shall partner with in eternity. Father, I pray that as she takes this journey of life that you would sprinkle just enough adversity to keep her dependent upon you. And I pray that she would walk in a way that gives her a love for the things of God and a disdain for the things of this world. May she be a woman of virtue with traits and convictions that are not pliable or flexible. Lord, we present this little one to you, asking in a special way that you would protect her, that you would keep her. Lord, give Brother Blake supernatural strength. Give him wisdom to raise a godly young lady. And then, Lord, I pray for her mother that you would give her the strength, the wisdom of an aged woman at a young age. Give her wisdom. Give her discernment. And in those moments where she's overwhelmed by the responsibilities of the day, may she be able to latch on to you and get a fresh hold on your divine omnipotence. So Lord, would you please bless this family? Would you keep and cover them? And I pray that today's service would serve as a catalyst that launches Aubrey into the second coming to meet you in peace. This is our prayer. We ask it in the wonderful name of Jesus. Let those that believe say together, amen, amen. At this time, we have some tokens that we want to give to you from today. We first have a baby dedication certificate along with the first little baby Bible encouraging you even now to begin reading the word of God aloud. Let the teaching of the scriptures fill up the atmosphere of your home. That's not a dead book. It's not a static book. The Word of God is alive and it's active. And I believe even now it'll begin bonding itself to the principles of her heart and her mind. May God bless both of you as you continue this journey together. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Welcome to the worship experience of the Oakwood University Church located on the campus of Oakwood University in Huntsville, Alabama, and the home of the Breath of Life Television Ministries. Experience worship where Christ is first. Lives are transformed. And sharing God's love flows freely. Welcome to the Oakwood University Church Worship Experience. Happy Sabbath and good morning, church. Listen, it is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Let's stand up to our feet and invite the presence of God into this atmosphere and welcome each other along the way. Everybody say, welcome. Welcome into the house of the Lord. We know it's a place where you can leave your cares behind. you can leave your cares behind. This morning, say, come on in. Come on in and happy. You can find hope. Hope for the hopeless way. Time for the life. Let's sing it one more time. Welcome. Welcome into the house of the Lord. How many of you need a place to shelter this a morning? Place where you can shelter from the rain. Let's check it out. Look around. Look around. There's joy. From the Father. All together, enter His gates with thanksgiving and enter His courts with praise.
Let's sing it one more time. Let's sing. Enter his gate. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Enter his court. Enter his court with praise. For the Lord, For the Lord God is good. And his mercy. And, his mercy lasts and let us go. And let us go into the house of the Lord. To his gates, enter into his courts with praise. All those who came to worship our living God this morning, let's say it again with them. Say with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. We came to magnify the Lord. Ladies, say with thanksgiving. We bless his name with Let's enter in happiness. Let's say enter. Enter in day. With, with, with thanksgiving. We bless your name, oh God. With thanksgiving. We magnify it. With thanksgiving. Let's sing that for the last time. Ladies, say. Enter in day. With, with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Sabbath. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his course with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth for all generations. And while we are still standing, let us bow our heads and invite the Lord into our midst. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to pause and say thank you. God, you saw fit to wake us up this morning even though we didn't deserve it. God, you saw fit to bring us to church safely even though we didn't deserve it. Lord, we need a word from you today. Move in this place. Move with the praise team. Move with the musicians. Move with the pastor. God, just be ever-present in this place. We will be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. We invite you not only into this place, but into our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. You may be seated in the house of God, but you know the only condition for seating is you have to put a smile on your face through your mask. I want to see cheekbones, eyes excited about the goodness of God. Anybody excited just that God woke you up this morning and started you on your way? I want to acknowledge with any first-time visitor, just wave your hand if this is here for your first time. We just want to say happy Sabbath to you. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. God is richly, richly going to bless you today by venturing out and spending time with us. Want to let you know, those who are worshiping with us in person and online, next Sabbath in conjunction with our Oakwood University alumni a weekend, we will not have serve worship services here on church, nor will we have it online. We will have worship services in the bond at the Bon Brown Bon Braun, I got it this morning, at the Bon, bon Braun Civic Center um, next Sabbath. So please make note of that. We will, for those um, who are willing to or watching the Breath of Life service, there will be a Breath of Life service stream at 11. O'clock. So those who are view, vir, viewing virtually, today, tongue-tied day today, those who are viewing virtually, um, next Sabbath there will be a Breath of Life service online, but we will not have worship here because we worship with the you know, Oakwood University for their alumni Sabbath. Also want to let you know, in conjunction with the Interfaith Broadcasting Commission um, and Breath of Life, they will be having the Easter special that will stream next Sunday at 11 o'clock. So please make sure that you mark your calendars. And we will have a special um, intro video later on in our worship service, but we do want to make sure that you are aware of those two special items as we're worshiping God today. We're also excited because today we have a baptism. Come on, somebody say amen. It is always a privilege and honor, and this young man is special, Mr. Kajani Perry. He is the son of Brother and Sister Perry, our Bible workers here today. He came from Rochester, New York, and he's visiting, coming down to hang out with his parents, recognize the call of God on his life. He said, Mom, Dad, I want to be baptized. It's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to allow your young people to experience the power of God, and this is the reason why we're here and the reason why we exist. And so I want to have, take a motion to accept Brother Perry to the Fellowship of Faith 
lead subject to his baptism. Is there a motion? Is it moved? Is there a second? All in favor say aye. Any opposed? It is carried. We're going to have a word of prayer. We're going to pray over the water, and then we're going to ask those who are in support of Brother Perry's baptism to stand at this time. God, thank you so much for an opportunity to see the Holy Spirit move in somebody's life in a tangible way. Lord, we ask that you will bless Brother Perry and allow him to experience the power of God and the outpouring of the Spirit on his life so that men, women, boys, and girls can experience you through him. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We invite all those who are willing to stand, those supporters of Brother Perry's baptism, to stand at this time. Brother Perry, this is your family, your Huntsville family. We are excited about what God has done and is going to continue to do through you. And now, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be faithful until he returns. Amen. Hallelujah. As we continue to bless his name, we just ask that you just stand real quick and just sing this quick song with us. I need you to look back over your week. Think about all that you've gone through throughout this year. And you know that you wouldn't have been able to make it if it wasn't for a good God. Come on now, not a regular simple God, but a good God, a great God, an amazing God, a worthy God. And so if that's your testimony this morning, I need you to just open up your mouth and sing along with us. Worship his name. The song says, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I tried, cause you've been, you've been so good. You've been, you've been so good. You've been, you've been so good to me. It's real simple. Sing it with us. Say, Lord. You've been so good. Say, Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try. Together, say, You've been so good. Take it up right there. Say, Lord, you've been so good. Father, you've been better than good. You've been better than good. I can praise you. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try. Because you've been so Say, Lord, you've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than God. I can't praise you. Oh, you, my God. I can't praise you. Even if I try. Say, you've been. Just 
want to say thank you, Lord, so many doors. So many doors you opened. So many ways so you made. So many ways you made. Every single so time you killed my body. Me. Come on, I can't afford to sit back so many serve a good God. We serve a good God and we give him all the glory. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. We're going to sing this hymn of the morning. You can stand on your feet with us as we sing. To God be the glory. Come on, let's ring it out together. To God. the 
life pain. That all may go in. Come on, sing it out. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
The old song says, he has done great things. Has he done anything great for you? He has done great things. Praise the Lord, great things he has done. Last week we told you that Brother Kelly Johnson had a major medical issue, father of Brother Jeff Johnson, and it was looking very bleak. He got a, I got a text just last night. He said his dad is doing well and now asked to be a spokesman for the, for the, for the resource where he is, for the rehab center. He was like, man, God is doing great things on behalf of the Johnson family, so we can praise the Lord for great things he has done. Also want to praise God for Brother Harold Greeley doing, well, doing better, for the champion. We want to continue to keep him in our prayers. Also, Brother Hampton is recovering at home. Brother Leroy Hampton, continue to keep him in prayer. Got a prayer request from a mother um, for an eight-year-old virtual member. His name is Adonis Henry. Had some um, challenging news that he found out this week. And she just asked, can we continue to keep young Adonis in our prayers? And we said we're going to definitely do that. Because, family, we've seen... God do great things because we're expecting him. We're expecting God to do the impossible. The last couple of weeks, we've been living an unrealistic, God is pushing us to have unrealistic faith. And, and, and we have to be intentional about believing God to do the impossible. Those who have been watching this early morning, it was on, not this, yesterday, this morning, but yesterday, um, Pastor Kyle Crawford shared, you know, what, what happens when you're walking with God, and it seems like God tells you he's going to do something, but he does not do it on time. Because that may be where you, you are. You believe in God, but, but his timing is messing with your, your, with your, your situation. Well, you, you've heard God do some big things, and you may have seen him do in somebody else's life, but, but in your life, it seems like he's taking his sweet time. When the story of Jairus and his daughter, he said, man, when you hold on to God's unchanging hand, even when his timing is not according to your will, you will watch God do things you've never seen him do before. And today I want to pray for somebody who's almost at the point where you want to give up or you're tired of waiting. And I want to let you know, if you just hold on to God's unchanging hand, you're going to watch God do things you've never seen him do before. Today, you may be saying, Pastor, I have an unspoken prayer request, something I'm believing God for, but I just, I'm not able to articulate it, nor do I want to, but I just want to just, just bring it to the altar, and I want to encourage you today that if, if that's you, I want to invite you to come down to the altar, that we can come together and pray together and believe that God is going to do great and mighty things for his people. We are going to have an opportunity to sing our prayer song, and then Elder J. Alfred Johnson is going to lead us to the throne of God as we seek him this morning, believing he can do anything but fail. As we enter into his presence, let's sing the song together. It says, I will be with you. 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 If you will only trust me. Next verse says, I'll never leave you. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We know that he will never leave. Trust. 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 Let's trust in him this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, this is for those who have some tough battles. He says, I'll fight. But he'll fight it for you. Fight your battle. You face it in the name of the Lord, because he said, I'll fight your battle. If you will only trust me. Trust me. Trust me. 
prayer is the answer to every problem in life because it puts us in tune with divine wisdom which knows how to adjust everything perfectly. So often we do not pray in certain situations because from our standpoint the outlook is hopeless. But the servant of the Lord promises us that nothing is impossible with God. She says that nothing is so entangled that it cannot be rem remedied. No human relationship is so strained that God cannot bring about reconciliation and understanding. No he human habit is so deep-rooted that it cannot be healed and overcome. No one is so weak that he cannot be strong. No one is so ill that he cannot be healed. No mind is so dull that it cannot be made brilliant. And so whatever we need, if we trust God, he will provide. So today, if anything is causing worry or anxiety, let us stop rehearsing the difficulty and begin to trust God for healing, for love, and for power. And so this morning, oh God, you are the answer. And so we appreciate the fact that you are here and that you are available to respond to all of our requests. We beg that you would please, in a special way, attend to the needs of those who have left their seats, come down to the front, who have fallen down on their knees in front of you to indicate that they are wanting you to hear their prayers. Oh, do it for them this day. And for a few others, we simply want to ask special, special prayers. We beg that you would please be with the Bird family this weekend as they look toward tomorrow when they shall come to this very auditorium and memorialize their loved ones. Be with our former pastor, be with his mother, be with his twin, be with his sister, be with all of that family. But we also know that they are not the only ones who are bereaved. And so we beg that you would please come down and minister to those whose places are at the Borner's bench at this time. We beg that you would please be with those who are celebrating in our nation this week. We beg that you would please be with the family of Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. Guide and direct her, oh Lord. She's been through it this weekend. Now we beg that you would please give her the ability to enjoy a few sweet days. We pray that you would please in a very special way go over to Ukraine this morning and touch the people of Ukraine. Touch the children of Ukraine, the husbands, the wives. Be with them and let them know that you are their God. And even from this sanctuary, we're going to pray for Vladimir Putin this morning. Lord, he is led by the enemy and we beg that you would please allow him to hear his very special friend and that's you. Oh help him, oh Lord. Oh help the people. We also beg that you would please be with our students here at Oakwood University. Be with our sick. Be with our shut in, oh Lord. Please touch our households who are in distress at this time. Remember our brothers and our sisters who need a very special walk with you. Oh Lord, please remember our pastoral families and our pastoral team. Guide and direct them. Jesus, you are soon to come. It's more than a cliche. You are soon to come, oh Lord. 
we beg that you would please give us the ability to just simply trust in you. And finally, we pray, O oh Lord, please give us the ability to pray unrealistic prayers. Guide us, direct us, O oh Lord. May we respond to you in all circumstances. This is our prayer. We ask it, we offer it in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Now that we know that our prayers have been answered, we can sing this out triumphantly. Open your mouth. Say, I am. I am. That. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It is now time for our tithes and offering. And as the deacons are getting ready, I'd like to share this thought with you all. And it says, when it comes to our tithe and offering, it shows how great our God is. God owns it all. From here to eternity, he owns it all. When we tithe, we offer up to him what is his and show that we recognize this ownership as a constant blessing upon us all. Remember that giving is the ultimate way to ensure the true richness of spirit. Without giving and thus becoming rich in spirit, you become watered down, lost in a flood of your own greed. Give to enrich your life while you are on this earth so that you may avoid becoming watered down, floating in a sea of empty belongings. Remember, a giving is the anchor that holds you through a stormy night. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for allowing us to be here once again to praise you, Lord. Please uh, continue to be, without, be with us throughout each and every day. I don't know what anybody may be going through right now, but Lord, whether it be financial or just anything else, please, Lord, encourage them, strengthen them. Let them know that they will get through it, Lord, and that you will help them and provide and just strengthen them each and every day. We want you to bless this offering, Lord, and continue to... Uh, Help us to receive a blessing throughout this service. Oh, we just love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen.
in a world that's constantly changing. It's a blessing and a comfort to know that God is still in control and that He is still touching the lives of people everywhere. Here at the Oakwood University Church, we are committed to reaching all people with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and responding to the needs in our community and beyond. We work diligently to ensure that you are blessed through our preaching, teaching, music, children's, youth, and community ministries. We praise God that we have been able to provide weekly food giveaways, COVID-19 testing and vaccinations, help during disasters, healthy food alternatives through our Oakwood University Church Market, our online support through Grief Share and Divorce Care Ministries, and daily prayer through our prayer ministry, just to name a few. But there is so much more that God is calling us to do, and we need your help. As people return to worship in person, with your prayers and support, we can continue to create additional online content to reach people with the good news and cover the production costs associated with providing a quality, meaningful, virtual worship experience. Please know that you can faithfully return your tithe and combined budget offerings in several ways. You can give in person by visiting our church office on Mondays through Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Or you can mail your gifts to the church at 5500 Adventist Boulevard, Northwest, Huntsville, Alabama, 35896. You can share your gifts online through our church website at www.oucsda.org forward slash donate. Or you can cash app us by utilizing our cash app handle, dollar sign OUCSDA. You can also use the Adventist Giving app and donate under Oakwood University Church. May God continue to bless you as we engage in meaningful, relevant, and life-changing ministry. Hi, I'm Mahit. Welcome to Old Time Y'all. Our ne next up, our news team. And all uh, the Old Town News team. And thank you, Malik, uh, for welcoming us to Old Town Live. Now, I don't know if you noticed or not, but April projects are due uh, this Monday, April 11th. And sorry, no exceptions. Well, that's all for now uh, because we want to get to our Old Town song. Uh, and next up, I will be singing the Old Town song. Now, now Pastor Phil doesn't know about that. Uh, but anyway, uh, after that, we'll go to some announcements. Uh, Cue the music. <laughs> Sorry kids, it looks like we were experiencing just a little bit of technical difficulty, but I think we're good now. So next, let's see which of our children registered in Oaktown had a birthday last week, or who has a birthday today, or who will have a birthday by Friday. Gia, Orion, Ruben, Derby, Andrew, Kayla, Justin, Angeline, Happy Dallas, birthday, Isaiah, Laura, Matthew, you. Bethany, Brianna, Josiah, Happy Cassidy, birthday, Christian, London, Aiden, Parker, Adriel, Kennedy, Kylie, Siobhan, Gabriella, Gabrielle, James, Serenity, Jaciana, Malachi, Madison, Kayla, Melita, Walia, Floyd, Naomi, Serenity, Elena, Joseph, Layla, and Lily and Lou, who are twins. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy, happy birthday. God has blessed you with one more happy birthday. 
giveaway for children registered in Oakham. So let's see who I will pick today. And I picked Grayson L. Congratulations. You will get your gift by email this coming week. And I should also announce that the children who were randomly selected for our Esther and Jesus quiz, which we had two Sabbaths ago, are... Josh Aiden, Ariana, MJ, Iman, and Major. Congratulations. You will also get your gift by email this coming week. Uncle Darren, why did Jesus come to earth? Well, I believe the answer is given to us in John 3.16, right? For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He came to this earth to give you and I a chance at, at everlasting life if we believe on him. What, Auntie Terry, why did Jesus come to earth? Well, Kingston, there are many reasons why Jesus came to earth, and I'll give you two. One, he came to earth to bring light to a dark world, because in John 12, verse 46, it says, I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. And another one is to save sinners just like you and me. Search the world to find him. Some do their best to fight him. Some let him live inside them. He's Jesus Christ, the truth, the light, the mission exciting. Hi kids, we're on a mission exciting. And on Sabbaths, we've had four missions exploring what Jesus' mission was to earth. Mission one revealed Jesus came to earth to save us from doing hurtful things to ourselves and others. Mission two revealed those hurtful things we do is called sin, and sin is breaking God's 10 commandments. Mission three revealed that Jesus' special method to save us was to become a human being and say no to Satan and say yes to our heavenly father. Mission four, which was our last mission, revealed among other things, that just like Esther couldn't change the law that would destroy her people, neither could Jesus change the Ten Commandments to save us. Jesus had to die to save us. Today, our mission is to explore the subject of sin a little further. Now kids, to begin, I need you to understand that sin is a terrible thing. It has caused all the bad things we experience in the world. In fact, Sin is so bad that long ago, God had to destroy the earth with a flood to save Noah and his family and to give Jesus a chance to be born and to give us a chance to be born and choose Jesus as our savior. So now let's listen to Maven as she recites part of Noah's story. Then the Lord saw the wickedness of the man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. And then the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land to man, to animals and to creeping things and to birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. But 
Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Genesis 6, 5 through 8. Let's put our hands together for Maven. Thank you, Maven. Excellent job. So sin is so bad that long ago, God sent a flood, but saved Noah and his family. And sin is so bad today that God is going to destroy the earth a second time. But God wants to save us and our families. And that's why God sent Jesus on a mission to earth to save us from our sins. Now, for the last part of our mission today, let's look at our theme song. Each week this month, we have sung some or all of our song, Mission Exciting. And you know why? Because it shows us just how terrible sin is. You see, the first part of the song says, Some search the world to find him. You see, sin is so bad that sin makes us think that we have to search for God. But God is always right here with us. The second part of the chorus says, Some do their best to fight him. Now here we see that sin is so bad that it causes us to fight against the very one who came to save us. So sin makes us think we have to go looking for God to save us when he's right here to save us. And sin makes us want to fight against God, even though he came to save us. So sin is terrible, but thank God Jesus is wonderful because he came to die for our sins. And we will talk more about that. But until then, let me ask you a question. Do you want to accept Jesus' death for your sins? I do too. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you for helping us to see a little more of how awful sin is. And please help us to accept Jesus' death for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. In a world that is constantly changing, it's a blessing to know that there is a living hope. His name is Jesus. On Sunday, April the 17th, in conjunction with the Interfaith Broadcasting Commission, we invite you to view A Living Hope, our Easter television series, which will be shown nationally on ABC television affiliates across the United States. A Living Hope will feature an Easter message by Pastor Debbie Air Snell. Our special musical guests will be Grammy Award winning artist CeCe Winans, along with Sayla, and violinist Patrick Bowie. For broadcast city, stations, and times of a living hope, please visit breathoflife.tv or give us a call at 256-929-6460. Tears you cry before. 
before they fall. He feels your pain. His heart and yours are one. The Father knows that sorrow's heavy chains are strong, but we. Let's give Sister Bowden another hearty amen today. Hallelujah. If God has been good to you this week, won't you say amen? If he's been real good, you ought to shout hallelujah. If you love him, say thank you, Jesus. And if you're glad he's coming again, let's put our hands together for the King of kings and the Lord of lords, giving his name a complete praise today. The Bible says that from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, that the name of the Lord is to be praised. And so we thank God for another opportunity to worship him in spirit and in truth. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. What do you say? I'm glad to see you, uh, not just those who are in the building, but grateful for those uh, who are joining us online as well. Before we get into the word today, there are just a few announcements that we want to share with you today. Uh, first of all, we've been in this teaching series entitled Get Unrealistic. And initially we were scheduled to have 21 days of early morning services. We extended it last week. We're in day 28. But you know, one of the things we learned is that from the day uh, Jesus was resurrected to Pentecost, that was 50 days. 
So we say, why stop at 28 days? We're going to go ahead and keep it on going to Pentecost. Can you say amen? And so for those of you who are online, keep on joining us each and every morning, Sabbath and Sunday mornings at 8, Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. We're going to continue teaching, sharing, and testifying all the way to May 1st, which is the 50th day. And even as our faith is growing, we're expecting the Holy Ghost to fall. Can the church say amen? And so I'm going to be on tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, so go ahead and join us. And we're going to be, along with our pastoral staff, teaching and sharing all week long, building up the name of Jesus Christ and looking to grow the faith of the body of Christ. And then also we're going to continue this teaching series on Wednesday night. When did I say? Wednesday night. Now this Wednesday is a very important message. I'm going to be talking about last day faith. And this is a very critical message. How many of us still believe we are in the last days? I don't think the last days are way off in the distant future. I believe that we are in that season right now. And so we want to talk about that Wednesday night, and we want to be able to identify some things in the Scriptures that would help us to be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ. And then also, we just want to remind you that on next Sabbath, we will not be meeting here at the church. It is our alumni weekend. Can you say amen? All of God's children are going to be traveling from near and far. And so we're going to be down at the Von Braun celebrating with the rest of the Oakwood community. But you can join us online. And we do want you to know for those who are watching on Breath of Life, there will be a service that is streamed through our Breath of Life platform just for you. And then we just want to ask that you would keep a number of our families in prayer. We want to keep Sister Carol Bird in prayer along with our former pastor, Dr. Bird, and his siblings, Carla and Buster. Uh, many of us are aware that Pastor William Bird passed away a little over a week ago. His funeral is going to be tomorrow at 1 o'clock p.m. here in the Oakwood University Church Sanctuary. And also there is a family hour today at Royal Funeral Home from 3 to 6 o'clock p.m., and then there'll be a viewing here at the church from 12 to 1 o'clock p.m. And so we want to make sure that we keep the entire Bird family in our prayers. Can you say amen? And also, we want to ask that you would keep Brother Virgil and Sister Gia Joseph in prayer. Uh, Brother Virgil lost his mother, Sylvia, here recently. Her services are going to be in Los Angeles on April the 30th. And so we want to make sure we continue to keep all of those families in our prayer. At this time, we're going to get here ready to jump into the Word. Is that all right? So do me a favor, go ahead and stand to your feet as we go into the teaching of the Word of God today. And if you're in the building or whether you're online, do me a favor, be an electronic evangelist. Go ahead and be an Apple apostle. Go ahead and share the message with as many people as you can online. If you're on Facebook, just hit the share button three or four times. If you're on YouTube, copy this link. Send it to somebody who needs to hear a clear word from the Lord today. And we're going to begin, as we've done the last several weeks, with our covenant statement. It should come up on your screen. We're going to say it and declare it like we believe it today. Um, how many of us believe that God still does unrealistic things? I just need to know. Amen. So let's say it together. Today, I recognize that faith is greater than my reality. I refute the ordinary because I was created for the extraordinary. I will not allow what I see to determine what I believe. What I believe will determine what I see. I will pray unrealistic prayers, embrace unrealistic vision, begin unrealistic pursuit, and maintain unrealistic expectations. I will live by faith and not feelings. I will live by faith and not facts. I will live by faith and not common sense. Faith won't allow me to be realistic, afraid, comfortable, or limited. I am proud to say that I am unapologetically unrealistic. Turn to your neighbor, give him a fist bump, say, get unreal. Turn to the neighbor on the other side and say, stay unrealistic, stay unrealistic. Amen and amen. At this time, we want to go ahead and go to the Word of God. Turn with me in your Bibles uh, to the book of St. Luke chapter 18. And we're going to begin together at verse number 1. St. Luke chapter 18. And we're going to begin together at verse number 1. When you get there, just say, Pastor, I'm here. St. Luke chapter 18. And we're going to begin together at verse number 1. This is the word 
that's going to cause somebody to break through in their faith today. This is the principle that needs to be absorbed. This is going to be the difference between where you have been and where God is taking you. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, when you get there, just say amen. The Bible says, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not do what? And not lose heart. Saints, I, I, look at me real quick. This is the word for somebody. I need you to hear me on this. God is saying that you've got to learn the difference between where you've been and where you're going is learning how to pray and not faint. How many of us know that there's a blessing when you persevere before the throne of God? All right? Bible says here in verse number two saying, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while but afterward, he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? I want to emphasize verse number four. The Bible says, and he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me. Today, saints, I want to talk to you under the subject, don't give God a deadline. Don't give God a deadline. Let's pray together. Father, I pray that in this little while that you would say much. Father, I'm asking that you would make your spirit so dense that it would suffocate any other type of principality that might be present. And so, Father, I'm praying, dear God, that faith will be multiplied exponentially in the hearing of the word. And so, Father, I'm praying that you would remove the lid, the cap, the plateau from somebody's faith, that we would be able to move into a new dimension of belief. So, Lord, help us not to just hear the word, but may we act on the word. Lord, would you hide me in the shadows of the cross that Jesus alone might be seen, that Christ alone might be heard, and at our end of our time together, may Jesus alone be praised. We ask this in the name of him who is altogether lovely. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Let God's people say together, amen. And amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Again, we're talking under the subject, don't give God a deadline. You know, church, I've come to accept that the hardest part of faith is not believing. The hardest part of faith is waiting. It is in the waiting process that our faith begins to expire. In fact, there are some tricky elements to life that really revolve around the idea of waiting. Isn't it funny how adversity moves in a hurry, but good things seem to take their time? Trouble moves with the speed of lightning, while blessing moves with the speed of molasses. Sickness comes as quick as a text message, but healing is as slow as the mailman. Bills come with the speed of an airplane, but the provision seems like it's moving on foot. Disagreements come with the swiftness of a microwave, but reconciliation is cooked in the crock pot. Your enemies are as fast as Google Fiber, 
but your allies are as slow as dial-up internet. Which is why the righteous are counseled consistently to learn how to wait on the Lord. And the truth is, friends, that unrealistic faith waits without a calendar, it waits without a timer, it waits without a deadline. In fact, unrealistic faith does not wait until real faith waits indefinitely. And I want to caution us, church, against giving God these artificial deadlines. Because when we create a deadline, essentially what we're doing is we are creating a time frame for faith to prevail. And we make a decision that says that if faith does not prevail in this deadline, we're going to then relent to our own human devices. And even though we will never say to God that you have until July or October to move, we all have this threshold of belief in our head that says if it doesn't happen by then, then we're going to invoke our contingency plan. And the thing I need somebody to get, as hard as waiting can be, acting ahead of schedule can make a bad thing even worse. You see, the truth is that Sarah had a deadline, and because she wasn't pregnant by a specific time, she matched Abraham with her handmaid Hagar, and impatience made a bad thing get worse. You realize that Jacob had a deadline for the birthright. Because his father was about to die, he procured it through trickery, and as a result, he lived the rest of his life living over his shoulder because impatience can make a bad thing worse. You realize that Judas gave Jesus a deadline. You realize the betrayal of Jesus was not about money. It was his attempt to make him use his divinity ahead of schedule. And the fact is that impatience made his bad thing get worse. And the thing I need somebody to know is that sometimes through impatience or giving God a deadline, you can make a bad thing turn into a a catastrophe. You see, the truth is that some of us have made it up in our minds that if God doesn't pay the bill by a certain time, I'm going to use my tithe and offering to make up the difference. Some have made it up in our minds that if we don't find a spouse in the church by a certain age, that we're going to begin dating outside of the church. Some have decided that if things don't get home at home, don't get better by July then we're going to see a divorce attorney. There is some student that has said, if I don't get the financial aid by the end of the semester, I'm not going to come back next year. And what I'm saying today is that sometimes when you give God a deadline, you actually short circuit your own miracle. And isn't it amazing, church, that we give God a deadline to move, but we don't give ourselves a deadline to obey. Uh, the, the crazy thing is we say God has to move by this time, but we don't say I've got to obey by a certain time. And can I just praise God this way? I just want to thank God that he's never given me a deadline to get right. In, in other words, what if God gave you a deadline to stop sinning? What if God gave you a deadline to stop gossiping? What if God gave you a deadline to stop doubting? And is there anybody that's thankful that God has never waited, we've never waited longer on God than God has had to wait upon us? Is there anybody that can just praise God that he didn't cut us off at a certain point, that he didn't shut us off when we went too far? I'm thankful that he doesn't deal with us as we deserve but he deals with us according to the multitude of his tender mercies. And the reason, friends, I can wait on God is because God never stopped waiting on us. Is there anybody that's thankful that God never cut us off? He didn't give us a lid, but he is long-suffering to his children. Can the church say amen? 
And so as we begin to unpack this word today, there are some things that I want us to be able to see. But before we get into the details of the parable, I want us to first be able to see the purpose of the parable. You see, Jesus in this parable, saints, is emphasizing the need for us to learn how to persevere in prayer. In other words, Jesus is teaching us on the front end of discipleship that things are not always going to happen instantly. And unrealistic faith, friends, is going to require that you learn how to never give up your petition to God. In other words, saints, your calendar ought not dictate the frequency of your coming to him. And so Jesus says that I want men to learn how to pray and not faint. Now, I want to give you one key of learning how to persevere in prayer, but it deals with the currency that you seek when you come before God. In other words, you'll never learn how to persevere in prayer, number one, until prayer becomes relational and not transactional. Let me say it again. That, that you'll never learn how to pray if prayer is transactional. You'll never learn how to pray until it becomes relational. Are you with me today, church? You see, the reason that some of us never persevere in prayer, the reason that some of us always give up our petition, the reason we yield as soon as it doesn't go our way is that for too many of us, prayer is a transactional activity and not a relational activity. In other words, for too many of us, when we go to God in prayer, our prayer closet is about what we receive, not who we receive. In other words, the difference between someone with a consistent prayer life and someone with a crisis prayer life is seen in the reason they approach God. You see, how many of us know that a crisis-based prayer life is someone that is forced to God's throne because of the presence of circumstance? But when I have a consistent prayer life, it is not circumstance that drives me there. It is relationship that that pushes me into the presence of God. You see, for too many of us, Jesus is a means to another end. But when you have a relationship, Jesus is not a means to an end. Jesus is the end or sum total of everything that you need. Are you with me today, church? And see, I need you to get this, beloved, that when your prayer life is transactional, you lose incentive to pray when you are denied what you ask or even if you receive what you came for. In other words, if I only come to God because I want something, if it's denied, then I'll no longer come to God. But understand that the inverse is also true. If I only come to God when I want something— Guess what? When I receive it, I also stop coming. In other words, I lose my incentive to pray as soon as my need is met. And how many of us know that even consistent receiving won't create a consistent prayer life? In other words, I need somebody to understand that the consistency of my coming will only reflect the consistency of my need. But what I need you to know is that when you're coming to God in order to foster a relationship, when your purpose for coming is to heighten your intimacy with him, I need you to know that you're being denied or you receiving doesn't dictate the consistency of your coming. Is there anybody that can testify that that the best part of meeting with God is not what you get from him. It's just having intimacy with him. Are you with me? In other words, the best time of my prayer closet is when I can just get lost in his presence. Where the church at today? When you just get lost in his presence, what happens is you find so much joy in his presence, receiving becomes a bonus. In other words, when his presence is what you seek, getting the bills paid is a bonus. Getting the healing becomes a bonus. That the primary reason I come for Jesus and anything extra is icing on top of the cake. Are you hearing me today, saints? 
And see, some of us, friends of mine, I need us to get is that, that we've never really prayed. We've only made wishes. Mm. And see, I want to admonish somebody in this way today. I want to admonish you to learn how to get to a place where you learn how to just enjoy the presence of God. Is there anybody that knows that his presence is better than his presence? Oh, y'all didn't get that. In other words, the presence of who he is is greater than the presence that he presents. And see, I need somebody to know that if you're missing out on the presence, then you're missing out on the best thing. What do you mean, Pastor? Remember Psalm 16, 11 says that in his presence, is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. The Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. See, how many of us know that even his presence doesn't bring peace, but his presence is peace? See, see the problem is somebody's praying for peace when all you got to do is get in his presence. And if you get in his presence, then the peace is going to be the automatic byproduct of living in the presence of God. And what I'm saying, saints, is that when you seek the relationship with the Son, you'll be strengthened in his presence. You'll be revived in his presence. Everything you need is found in the presence of Jehovah. Okay, okay, y'all not with me today. Uh, anybody in this room old enough to remember the old Superman movies? And, and you remember like the only thing that could cause Superman to become weakened was kryptonite. But whenever he got weakened by kryptonite, one of the things that Superman would do is he would leave this atmosphere. And what he would do is he would just go bask in the presence of the sun. And it's amazing because he would be revived in the sun. He would get re-strengthened in the sun. He would get replenished by the sun. His lack would be filled in the presence of the sun. And I guess what I'm saying, if he could be strengthened by the S-U-N, how many of us know that we can be revived by the S-O-N? And when you get to a place where you just dwell in the presence of the sun and bask in the presence of the sun, that you get the strength that you need because everything we lack is found in his presence. Are you hearing the word today, saints? Second thing, friends of mine, that unrealistic faith teaches us, is this story teaches us, is that unrealistic faith doesn't need a whole lot of companions. Now, church, there are some details that Jesus puts in this parable for a reason. There are some things that he lays out because there are some particular tensions that he wants us to be able to grasp. So what he does is he tells the story of this widow who goes before this unjust judge. And understand that she is described as a widow. We don't know if she is an older woman, but we know that she is someone who is without a husband. And what he does is he contrasts her helplessness against the sovereignty of this judge who does not fear God, and he has no regards for people. Are you hearing me today? And what he is trying to picture or create is the idea of helplessness. Are you with me? Now, one of the things I learned, Lewis, is that in a, in a city or a village that had at least 120 men, what would happen is you would have a number of justices so that if you couldn't get justice from one judge, what would happen is you could appeal to another judge who would actually allow things to work in your favor. But what I learned is that in a small village, a rural town, where there was less than 120 20 men. You didn't have a series of justices. You would have one circuit judge. 
that would go around to different areas and dispatching justice. And because there was only one judge, he had no appeal that was authority that was higher than him, which would make him that much more arrogant in his disregard for people and even against God because he is the sum total of justice. Are you with me today, church? And notice now the word says that she is a widow. And the connotation is, friends of mine, is that understand that a widow at this time was one of the most vulnerable members of the society. In other words, a widow would not have a husband to advocate for her. A widow, at least in this text, does not have adult children to stand with her. A, this widow has no kinsman redeemer to stand with her. In other words, there is no human aid to stand with her. She's got to go before the presence of the judge all by herself. And even though she has no husband to advocate, and even though she's got no community to stand with her, even though she doesn't got a bunch of folk that have sway or pull with the judge, the one thing I like about this lady is that even though she ain't got no posse of folk interceding on her behalf, she's got enough faith to say, if ain't nobody going to go with me, I'm going to go before and present my case, even if I've got to go all by myself. And can I just say this, friends of mine, and I want to be mindful on how they say this, because I believe very much in the need or the importance of having a community of faith around you. In fact, I advocate in the book to make sure you have a believing community around you. But one of the things I've come to learn in my own experience is that even though it's good to have folk praying with you, how many of us know that there's going to come a time where you're going to have to go before God all by yourself. And see, the unrealistic believer knows that I can go before God even if I have to go by myself. Are you with me today, saints? See, see ah, let me say it this way. It's good to have folks say that they're praying with you. But how many of us know that most of the folk that have said they're praying for you have never lifted a single petition with your name on it before God. See, see, when folks say they're praying for you, it's just how religious folk have sympathy for the thing that you're going through. And what I'm saying is, I'll tell the truth, how many times have you said, I'm praying for you? Oh, y'all brand new in here today. Well, you said, I'm praying for you, but you forgot to follow through on the prayer. Am I telling the truth today? But the larger point is this is that unrealistic faith does not attach itself to someone that you perceive as having greater faith than you. Unrealistic faith says, I'm going to stand before the throne even if I have to stand there by myself. Now, again, I believe in recruiting an army of prayer warriors, but I have come to this conclusion that there are certain prayers that have to come from your lips and they have to arise out of your heart. Am I preaching to anybody today? Remember the story when Hezekiah got sick and was about to die. When the prophet Isaiah came, he didn't ask Isaiah to pray for him. The Bible says that he turned his face to the wall and he began to ask Ask God for an extension of his life. Do you remember when Hannah was barren and had no kids? She prayed so hard at the temple that the prophet Eli thought she was drunk and out of her mind. You remember when Daniel found out that the decree had been signed. He didn't call Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He went up to the open window and prayed toward Jerusalem like he always had done. Are y'all hearing me today? And my point is that nobody could pray for Hezekiah's illness like Hezekiah. There is no one that could pray for Hannah's barren womb like Hannah. There is nobody that could pray for Daniel's deliverance like Daniel. And there is nobody that can pray for the urgencies of life like you can. Am I telling the truth that nobody can pray for your children like you can pray for your children? There is nobody that can pray for your health like you 
you can. There is nobody that can pray for your job like you can. Why? Because they're not feeling the burden in the same way you feel the burden. When you pray, it has a different weight. When you pray, it has a different urgency. When you pray out of the midst of the despair of your own soul, it hits the heart of God with a greater weight because nobody can pray for you like you can. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And I guess what I need somebody to know is that even when you ain't got nobody to advocate with you, you've got a standing with God that allows you to go before God even if you've got to go all by yourself. And see, what I want to say is stop outsourcing your spiritual connection with Jesus. And see, there is somebody, and I want to say this is with as much compassion as I can. There's somebody who's saying, well, pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know how hard it is. Right now, I just don't have the strength to pray. The devil is a liar. Guess what? You may not have the mind to pray, but guess what? You do have the strength to pray. What do you mean if you can tell your best friend? If you can tell your homie, if you can tell the pastor, that means you got enough strength to tell it to Jesus. The one who is able to turn the situation upside down. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying today, saints? In fact, put this quote up on the screen. I want you to look and see what Ellen White says here, uh, Prophets and Kings 270. Put this up real quick. I need you to know that the weakest thing that the enemy can, the one thing the enemy wants to do is keep you from calling on the name of the Lord. In fact, she says this, that Satan trembles at the sound of prayer. Oh, you should have lost your mouth right there. See, this is how I know we ain't praying. <laughs> oh, God. Satan trembles at the sound of prayer. Like when he hears you say, our father. He starts getting PTSD because he knows that if you just start praying, God is going to start moving and his power is going to be broken. She says, our great adversary is constantly seeking to keep the troubled soul away from God and appeal to heaven by the humblest saint is more dreaded by Satan than the decrees of cabinets and the mandates of kings. In other words, I need you to know that even in your weakest moments, Satan is afraid when you pray. That's why when you're weak, he wants to keep you away from the throne. Because if you just get down on your face and say, our father, is there anybody that believes that prayer still changes things. That prayer opens doors that no man can shut. That prayer still raises the afflicted. That prayer still reconciles the broken. That prayer still revives the church. That God does exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think when we come together and pray. Are you hearing me today, saints? <laughs> third thing this teaches us beloved is that sometimes when you pray you got to learn how to pray without a deadline and I want to just say this to somebody who is in a waiting posture today anybody waiting on God today let me say to that anxious scheming, irritable, quick to go to plan B person. God's word to you today is be still and see the salvation of the Lord. It's crazy. The word says that this woman makes her, her case to the judge on several occasions, but the word says that he would not do it for a while. Now, remember, considering the fact that she is a window, widow, that she is seeking justice from the judge. Are y'all with me today, saints? What, what Jesus is communicating, again, is the idea of helplessness. Somebody say helplessness. 
But you know, there is a reason (laughs) that she keeps appealing to the judge. There is a reason that she keeps coming over and over again. There is a science as to why she keeps making the same appeal. You see, the reason she keeps coming is not to be annoying. The reason she keeps coming is because he's the only one that can do it. (laughs) No, no, stay with me, church. Because remember, she, she is seeking, the Bible says, justice against a neighbor that has wronged her. In other words, that it stands to reason that she's already tried to get the neighbor to change his mind, but the neighbor has refused. But notice that the neighbor refuses, but guess what? The judge just delays. Oh, y- y'all didn't get it. See, the, the, the neighbor says no. The judge just says not yet. Yo, y'all, y'all, y'all. In other words, see, in other words, the reason she keeps appealing to the judge is she's got to go to somebody that has more authority than the neighbor. In other words, she can't call her other neighbors because the other neighbors don't have more authority. She's going to be right back before the judge. She can't call her relatives because her relatives don't have more authority. If she calls the relatives, she's going to be right back before the judge. If she calls her friends, the friends don't have more authority. She's going to wind up right back before the judge. So she's made it up in her mind that if they can't really help me, and I'm going to be right back before the judge anyhow, why am I going to fool around with those who have no authority? I'm just going to go to the one that's able to turn the situation upside down. So saints, what makes more sense? to go to those who have no authority for help or to sit consistently before the one that has the power to turn your situation upside down. Are y'all hearing me today, saints? See, in other words, a part of persevering in prayer is coming to the realization, number one, that I can't do it. Y'all not with me yet. It's the realization that I can't do it. But the reason I stay before the throne is I've got clarity about the fact that they can't do it either. Okay. See, the problem with some of us is we see God as one of several options. (laughs) So when God doesn't do it when we want to, then guess what? We go to option B, C, and D. But how many of us have lived long enough to see all of your efforts come to nothing, see all your friends disappoint you, you'll see all your loved ones prioritize something else, you're going to see your ride or die right or away. And see, sometimes in the development of faith, you've got to be disappointed by people because it is the disappointments of man that help you to understand the faithfulness of God. And it is only their inconsistency that allows us to celebrate God's faithfulness. And see, watch this, Doc Johnson. The reason you got to stay before God is this, is you got to come to the place, oh, help us, Lord, where you realize that if God can't do it, it just can't be done. Oh. The reason I ain't going to my cousins, the reason I ain't going to Pookie them, the reason I ain't calling LaShawn is because if God can't heal it, it just can't be healed. If God can't grow it, then it just can't be grown. If God can't bless it, then it just can't be blessed. If God can't revive it, then it cannot be revived. If God can't restore it, then it can't be restored. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So, so instead of going to plan B, C, and D, you ought to just stay before the one that's able to do something about it. <laughs> Yo, I, I was sharing this earlier this week. 
I had a situation, man, with, with my kids. I remember one day we were getting ready to go somewhere. They were outside, you know, riding their bikes in the driveway. And so something happened, Dr. Williams, where they all kind of crashed into each other on the bikes. And so they all come inside bleeding and bruised and cut. And, and so my wife was upstairs in the shower getting dressed. Now, I need you to know, Lewis, this thing was so disrespectful. <laughs> when they come in the house, I see them bruised up and scratched up. And I, so, so I say, um, can I help y'all? They were like, no, nah, daddy, we'll wait on mommy. And, and so what happens is, like, they, they go upstairs. Now, I know Gianna is going to be taking a long time. And so I hear them calling to my wife in, in, in the shower. And she says, why don't you go and see your daddy? And, and they say to her, well, mommy, it's okay. We'll wait for you. And, and, and it's crazy, friends of mine, because I yell to them upstairs. I say, hey, y'all, do, do y'all want me to look at it? It's so disrespectful. They're like, no, daddy, it's okay. We'll wait for mommy. Now, I need you to know that she takes another 40 minutes to get dressed. But they would rather sit there bruised and bleeding and bloody and wait on the one that can fix it than to go to a plan B. See, they made it up in their minds that daddy's going to patch us up, but only mama can heal. Instead of waiting on, instead of going to him, we just go wait for the one that's going to make the situation better. Because if we go to daddy, we going to wind up back with her in the end. And what I'm saying is that when you go to plan B and plan C and plan D, you're going to wind up back before God. And instead of going to the alternate routes, just stay before God. Who is able to fix it, stay before the God who is able to bring it to pass. Are y'all hearing me today, saints? Now, there's another reason she perseveres. Y'all still with me, church? Is that this lady understands that delay and denial are not the same thing. See, what Jesus does is he uses some legal truths to teach a spiritual truth. You know, when I used to read this, Malcolm, I thought she was appealing a verdict in an attempt to get it overturned. I thought that the judge had made a decision that she was just simply trying to get him to reverse. But no, the Bible simply says that he would not do it for a while, which some scholars suggest that what the judge does is he issues a continuance. He issues a stay. In other words, what he keeps doing is giving a new trial date with the attempt of hoping to weary the old lady out. In other words, some suggest that maybe this unjust judge has taken a bribe from the neighbor. And so what he's attempting to do is put off the date again and again and again until the girl just gives up and decides to stop coming. But guess what? This thing blows up in his face. So he moves it from February to April. And guess what? She's still there in April. He moves it from April to December, and she's still there in December. He moves it from one year to the next. She's still there next year. He moves it to the next year. She shows up to make the case next year. And the reason he's trying to wear her out is because the one time she doesn't show up, what it does is it decides the case simply because she gives up on her appeal. And what I'm saying is sometimes we decide the case because we give up on the appeal because it doesn't happen when we want things to happen. Are y'all hearing me today, saints? And see, the problem with us is that we have this instant gratification approach to spirituality. See, see a part of the American dream is, 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 is it messes us up because what we do is we celebrate those who get everything early, the Mark Zuckerbergs. But how many of us understand that, that your latter day oh, 
is going to be greater than your former day. Do I have any folk that knows your best years? Oh, God. See, it's a lie that your four years of college should be the best years of your life. You mean God lets you plateau at 22 years old? But how many of us know that your best season ought to be your current season? Oh, where the church at today? And see, what I'm trying to get somebody to understand is that just because it hasn't happened yet, that doesn't mean it won't happen. See, to every statement of unbelief you consistently declare, you ought to put the word yet at the end. In other words, instead of just complaining and saying, I haven't been healed, is there anybody that just believes, I haven't been healed yet? Instead of saying, I haven't found a man, just say, I haven't found the right one yet. Instead of saying, the church ain't moving, just say, it's not moving yet. Instead of saying, it hasn't happened, just say, it hasn't happened yet. In other words, friends of mine, sometimes you just got to learn how to wait your turn. <laughs> This I shared a couple of weeks ago. I remember uh, one time I was on a plane, Dr. Williams, and uh, when, when you get on those little tiny planes, what happens is sometimes the space in the overhead compartment, it can go really quick. And, and so, man, I had a bag and I needed to get where I was going, so I did not want to have to check my bag under the plane. So what happened is I'm like in, in main cabin number one, so when I see them boarding first class and sky priority, listen, I played myself so hard, I tried to go ahead and board with first class so that I could get access to the overhead compartment. But how many of us know that when they scan your ticket, it tells them what zone you're supposed to board in. And so what happens is when they scan my ticket, as I'm coming in with the first class folk, it makes a alarming noise and they say, sir, you're not supposed to board with first class. You're supposed to board with main cabin number one. And so I have to take the walk of shame in front of everybody past first class and comfort plus, and I gotta sit with the common folk in, in main cabin one. No, I need you to understand that even though I didn't get to board first, I didn't leave the airport. Because I didn't get to get in early, I don't leave the terminal. Why? Because I still got a ticket. And because I've got a ticket, it guarantees me a spot on the plane. It just means I've got to wait my turn. And what I'm saying to somebody today is that just because it didn't happen when you want it to happen, don't leave the terminal. Because how many of us know that in Christ you've got a ticket in his word that guarantees you access. You can still board. You simply got to wait your turn. Are you hearing me today, saints? So I'm looking at this thing and I'm tripping, right? Because I'm like, man, this lady keeps coming to the judge over and over and over again. Now, I need you to know that takes faith in and of itself. What do you mean, pastor? Because if this man is so cruel and harsh, if he's that exacting, for her to keep showing up like this is wasting the court's time. If she just keeps showing up without an appointment, what means is she can be held in contempt of court. So her ability to keep coming must mean that she has legal standing to keep coming before the judge. In other words, she must have, as the young folks say, some receipts on her neighbor. She must have some receipts that guarantee her right to have an appointment with the judge. How do you know that, Pastor? Why? Because even if the judge does not want to give her justice, the only thing he can do is delay it. He can't deny it. Are y'all hearing me today, saints? See, the reason some of us are not getting it, we read the King James Version that says, get vengeance. 
But that's not what she's asking for. She's asking for justice, which means that she must have some documentation, something that is written, that if the judge ignores it, it causes him to be in violation of his oath and causes him to destroy the sanctity of his courtroom. So all he can do is delay it. But guess what? He can't deny it. Why? Because she's got something that is written that the judge is unable to ignore. And is there anybody that knows that when you stand on the promises of God, that the promises of God are your receipts that the judge can't ignore? Because if he ignores his word, then he violates the oath that he made in his kingdom. And because he's a God that cannot lie, when you bring your receipts to the courthouse, guess what? He's got to honor what he said in his holy word. So there's somebody that's dealing with some financial lack today. You better hold on to your receipts and say, Lord, you said that you should supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. There is somebody that's got sickness that's saying, Lord, you said the prayer of faith will save the sick and that the Lord is going to raise them up. There is somebody who's mad that he's taking too long. Lord, you said that you will come quickly and your reward is with you. There is somebody who's saying, my enemies are too great. But you want to say, Lord, you said no weapon formed against me will be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment, God is going to condemn. There is somebody who is dealing with lack on the job, but the Bible has said, I was young and now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging after bread. Is there anybody that wants to cling to the receipt and say, Lord, I'm going to hold you to your word. You're going to be like the old lady. You're just going to keep appealing. You're going to keep showing up. You're going to be like Jacob, where you just say, Lord, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Are you hearing the word today, saints? But see, I don't want you to misunderstand the purpose of the parable. So, so this is what I need you to get. So sometimes in a parable, God reveals his character through comparison. Sometimes he reveals his character through contrast. You see, the point, friends, is not that God is like the unjust judge. What he is saying, Stephen, is that if those who are against you can be compelled to do something for you, what will I, the God who is on your side, do for those who cry out to me day and night? And in other words, he's saying, I need you to understand the roles that your faith is not making me do something that I don't already want to do. See, how many of us know that God is not a stingy God that has his fence cleansed? And you've got to use your faith to pry the hand of God open. I need you to know his hand is already open. His ear is already inclined. And the point is, is that if evil men can be persuaded to do something for you, won't I avenge my children that cry out to me day and night if they will just learn how to wait on me and trust in me and stop giving me deadlines. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? See, I need you to understand the only thing that's like God, uh, that the only similarity between God and the just judge is this, is that he just hadn't done it yet. But I need you to understand that you got to get to a place where you stop creating this threshold of faith 
that says, if it don't happen by such and such time, then I'm going to do plan B, plan C, plan D. But you got to make it up in your mind to where you realize that God is not just one of several options. But is there anybody that understands, like the psalmist, that we got to learn how to look to the hills from whence cometh our help and realize that our only help comes from the Lord. We got to learn how to abide in him and be still in him. And I need you to know that the thing that you are seeking, the thing that you are praying for, the unrealistic thing, it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. And we've got to get to a place where we stop giving God a deadline and we learn how to wait on him. How many of us believe the word of God today? Wait on him and he shall encourage your heart. Sometimes in life you'll find that you get in a hurry. But when you have assurance, you don't need to worry. You can wait, wait, wait on the Lord and he will do just what he said. If you just, you must trust and don't be dismayed oh. patience in time of trouble trust and be Give. Don't you give in? Just 
gotta trust in his name and you don't be dismayed oh. amen amen saints listen I, I wanted to be able to stretch this word over a few weeks because I couldn't quite push it all into one week but I the one thing I do need us to understand about this parable is that this parable on persevering it's not just about waiting until a certain prayer request is answered. But if you look at this in the larger context of Luke chapter 17 and how Jesus summarizes this, you know what this is actually dealing with? It's about having the spiritual infrastructure to persevere to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because see, how many of us understand as the Advent people that, that even when Jesus told the parable of the, of, 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 of the talents, he says a man gives his servants five talents, two and then one, but then the Bible says he goes away on a long journey. The parable of the 24, uh, 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 of the 10 virgins says that there, there is a delay, that there is, this, there is this long period that they have to wait for the bridegroom to come. And see, there were five foolish that were shut out because they didn't have enough oil to endure the weight. And what I'm saying is, beloved, that's why Jesus asked the question. He says at the end, right here in verse number eight, he tells you, I'm going to avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? He says, he's helping us to understand this, and we're going to talk about it a little bit more Wednesday night. He's saying, the reason a lot of my people are going to be shaken out is they didn't have enough faith to get them to the finish line. He's saying, will there be any left by the time that I come? And see, that's why this series on unrealistic faith, it is so critical, friends of mine. It, 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 see, if you, uh, if you can't wait on God to send you a spouse, you won't be able to endure the time of trouble. If you can't wait on God to, to answer these prayers, what's going to happen when you are in a, in, a, in a very, very, very clear line of delineation? You're either going to be marked or you're sealed. And we're in that time of Jacob's trouble where you can't buy or sell. Am I preaching the seven day of business? Where you can't buy or sell until you have the mark of the beast. Where you can't go un into the grocery store unless you've made a sign of allegiance to the powers of this world. How am I going to trust God to feed me in that day? If I can't trust 
God to feed me tomorrow. How many of us know that every trial is preparation? It is God readying us for the things that are about to come. And you know, God loves you too much to let you face those tests without some quizzes along the way. I thank God that he's readying a people for the things that are not likely, but the things that are inevitable for every child of God. How many of us believe the word today? My appeal today is twofold. I'm inviting you to stand to your feet as we get ready to close. I want to talk to those very disappointed saints watching online, to those who are very disappointed in the building. You've waited so long for certain things to come to pass. And because you had a deadline in your head, you just assume that if it didn't happen by the time I turned 25 or by the time I was 30 or by the time I was 35 or by the time I, I 40 or by the time I got to this place, you just assume that if it didn't happen by then that, that God couldn't do it. And see, you extinguished your own faith because you gave God a deadline. You realize that even Mary and Martha, they, they kept Lazarus out for a little while, but then they gave Jesus a deadline, four days, because they believed that after four days, the spirit, believed, he was good and dead, he began to stink. And see, and that's why Jesus asked the question, where did you lay him? Because they gave him a deadline instead of waiting on Jesus. Because I need you to know that even if somebody dies, that's still not too late for Jesus. And I need somebody to just add the word yet to every statement of unbelief that's been plaguing you. My brother, sister, you struggling with alcohol. You struggling with letting go of tobacco. You feel like you won't ever overcome. God sent me to let you know you just hadn't overcome yet. There's somebody wrestling inwardly in a marriage. You you, you fake your way all the way through this service, in and out with happy Sabbath smiles, and you feel like it just won't ever get better. No, the marriage just hasn't gotten better yet. I want to say to that couple, like my wife and I, over 11 years ago, you've had a number of losses through miscarriage, and you think we will never have no kids. No, you just hadn't had them yet. There's somebody who's been in school. You, you're a student. You've been in school three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years. I need you to know it doesn't matter how long it takes you to graduate from school. 25 alumni weekends from now. Ain't nobody going to be checking on the year of your diploma. It doesn't matter if you've graduated. Just say, I hadn't finished. Don't hate on me. Stay in your lane. I just hadn't finished yet. You struggle with your health, your weight goes up and down, you're just saying, no, I just hadn't got where I wanted to be yet. You've been living from month to month and check to check and you just want to get to a place where you just, anybody ever just get to that place where you're just tired of, you don't even get excited about payday no more. Because <laughs> you know it don't stick, it's just passing through. <laughs> As I know y'all work for the church. Come on and say amen. Passing through. But you're, you're praying for increase, and it just hasn't come yet. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Praise God. That's a great decision to serve Jesus. My next appeal is this. It's for somebody to get to that place where what drives your prayer life is not what you receive, it's who you receive. See, this whole thing about persevering in prayer, it won't work if you're just here to get something. It only works when you're here to know someone. 
And what I want to do today is I want to present to you Jesus. See, this is not a key as to how you can get more from God. This sermon is about how you can get more of God. How you can get in a relationship with him. And there's somebody today as I'm opening up the doors of the church, whether you're in the balcony, whether you're on the floor, you want to join this couple who has already come and you want to say, I want to come. And I realize the reason religion hasn't stuck, the reason it has not had any impact is because I've been functioning in a transactional way. But now I want to shift into a relational way because I realize that everything I need, that the fullness of joy is in his presence. Right hand pleasures forevermore are in his presence that liberty is in his presence and so today I invite you into a relationship so today as every head is bowed every uh, eye is closed I'm just gonna make an appeal for two a few moments an appeal for discipleship and and maybe there's somebody today in the balcony you're on the floor you want to just come down today you want to give me your hand and give Jesus your heart to say I want to go all the way in relationship with Jesus I want to be baptized for the remission of my sins. Maybe I want to begin some Bible studies. Maybe you just are so excited about what you see here at the Oakwood University Church that you want to join by profession of faith or by transfer or by letter. If you are here today, don't look around. Don't don't look for permission. Just tell your neighbor, excuse me. Step out of your aisle. Come on down to the front. Give me your hand and give Jesus Christ your heart today. Today, I want to invite you not just into religion. I'm going to invite you into relationship. I'm not just going to give you a bunch of name it and claim it stuff, a bunch of keys to transaction. No, I want to give you the path to relationship. So today, if you're here and the Spirit of God is moving upon your heart, if you're in the balcony, you can come. If you're on the floor, you can come. Just tell your neighbor, excuse me, I've got an appointment with salvation. I realize that today is not the result of chance or accident, but providence brought me here. So whether you're young, whether you're a teenager, whether you got some gray hair, you're sensing your need for a savior and you want to enter into a relationship, just tell your neighbor, excuse me, come on down. And see, the one thing I liked about this lady is that even if nobody else came with her, she says, I'm going to the judge and I got to stand before his judgment seat, even if I've got to stand all by myself. And the reason that's critical, friends, is that each and every one of us will have to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And I need you to know that when you stand before the judgment seat, it is not a group activity. You will have to stand right there by yourself in the merits of Jesus Christ are found weighed in the balances and found wanting because you're appearing unclothed by his righteousness. So today, if you hear his voice, come on down, give give me your hand and give Jesus your heart. God bless you, my sister. That's a good decision. Come on down. If you're online, just go to OUCSDA.org forward slash connect. Go to OUCSDA.org forward slash connect. Is there somebody else today? You want to give your heart to Jesus? You want to enter into a relationship? I'm not going to hold this appeal much longer, but I want to give somebody, somebody's another chance, an opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. So won't you come? I'm going to pray in just a moment, but I'm going to give a number of individuals a, a chance to say yes to receive the Lord today. Won't you come? Won't you come? And see, this is the thing somebody's got to get. You sitting here saying, Lord, I'm waiting on you. But you know what's happening right now? God is waiting on you today. And you know why I'm standing here? Because he was long-suffering enough to wait on a sinner like me. And guess what? He'll wait for you too. But you've got to act. You've got to move while there is yet time. So today, won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? My last appeal, you're simply saying, Pastor, I hear the word. I want to revive some expired petitions. I'm going to learn how to persevere in prayer. I'm not going to allow my calendar to dictate the urgency of my coming before my maker. If that's you today, you're just raising your hand and saying, I'm persevering. I'm I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm waiting in the Lord. I, I have no plan B. I have no plan C. My only option is Jesus Christ. 
Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and it is a light unto our path. And Father, my prayer today is that you would allow the word to settle so powerfully into our hearts that we would not yield to the need for instant gratification. But I'm praying that you would help us to wait without details, to wait without a calendar, to wait without a timer. Help us to have enough faith to where we don't give you a deadline to move, but we just give ourselves a deadline in which to obey. Father, we know it's not a matter of if you're going to move. We know it's just a matter of when you're going to move. So help us to not act according to our own devices, but help us to put our hand in your unchanging hand and to trust, Lord, that you will do exactly what you said. And so, Father, help the, the mature to understand that delay and denial are not the same thing. Help somebody to get to the place where, where if we have some people praying with us and praying for us, it's good. But even if we've got to stand before your judgment seat all by your, ourselves, we're willing to stand there, Jesus. So, Lord, would you bless us? Would you keep us? Would you give us an infrastructure of soul, we pray. In the blessed name of Jesus the Christ, let all who love the Lord say amen. Let those who await on the Lord put their hands together and give Jesus praise today. Amen, amen. You may be seated. If you just follow my sisters here, they're going to give you some directions on the journey in the path of discipleship. I want to make a couple of acknowledgments of people that my eyes didn't see earlier on. I see Pastor Ross. If you would stand, I think, is that you, Pastor Ross? Go ahead and stand to your feet visiting us from the Washington Conference uh, here in town this weekend. God bless you, Pastor. We see the Treasure of Southwest Region, Pastor Palmer. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, any other guests who are here with us uh, to support the Bird family, would you stand so we can acknowledge you today? We didn't acknowledge you earlier today. God bless you. Let's put, give a warm Oakwood welcome to all of those who came to visit us this weekend. God bless you. May God richly bless you as you are here and as you travel home. And also for those who are online, let's give Pastor and Mrs. Johnson a hearty amen for the word that they shared with us online this morning. God bless you. Thank you so much. And then those who are online, stay online. Got some more good news we're going to share with us in our Praise Cafe after our prayer benediction. Aren't you glad you came to hear the word of God this morning? Praise God. And thank you so much, Pastor Snell, for reminding us not to give God a deadline. Just a few announcements I want to make sure that you are aware of. Today, between 3 and 6, will be family hour at the Royal Funeral Home for the Bird family. Please continue to keep Pastor Bird and his mother, Sister Carol Bird, in prayer in the family. Um, the funeral will be tomorrow here at the church at 1 o'clock. You can, the viewing will happen between 12 and 1 o'clock. Um, also, again, reminder, next week we will not have service here. We will have worship at the Von Braun Civic Center. Um, again, if you've enjoyed this time, I praise God, Pastor Snell, we're pushing it 50 days. Starting, continuing tomorrow, we're going to have tomorrow morning, Pastor Snell is going to share. And Wednesday, we're going to talk about last day faith. We're going to invite you to stand at this time as we have our benediction by Brother David, as we consider ourselves dismissed immediately after our benediction. Our head is bowed. Eternal Father, we just want to say thank you for just allowing us to make it to this day. We pray, God, that the word will not fall on its own ground, but it will fall on good ground. But as we leave this place, we're never from your presence with a seated door. And we all just say amen and thank God. So, Doc, man, Pastor Snell says, if you can't say amen, Come on, say ouch. Uh, I confess it now. Ouch. <laughs> ouch. 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 Man, he was speaking <laughs> to me today. Don't give God a timeline. Good amen. Night. Good <laughs> night. Good <laughs> night. Man. Listen, listen, listen. I, uh, um, yeah. With, with what I'm trying to have God work on yes. my time, yes. my time frame. Yes. And, and I've just, yeah. Okay. So there were some hashtags that, that, that 
you know, we got from here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm not, you know, all excited because, I mean, really, the, 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 the message spoke to me today. It did. It's, it did. It uh, spoke. First hashtag we have is persevere. Mm -hmm. Hashtag mm -hmm. persevere. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the next one is hashtag wait for the one. Wait for the one. Yes. yes. We go. We try to talk to everybody else. Mm -hmm. We try to go mm -hmm. everywhere else. Mm -hmm. But there's only one who can fix our situation. Only one. Only Good one. Night. Only Wait one. That's why one. we have to hashtag persevere. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Wait for the one. Wow. So the next hashtag, yet. Wow. That was big for me. Yeah. That was big for me. Yet. <laughs> Uh, man, are we, are we not waiting on something mm -hmm. and God has not done it yet? yet? Not that he won't do it, but it's yet. Yeah, I, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, next hashtag. Hashtag delay is not denied. Amen, amen. Just because we have to wait doesn't mean it won't happen. Doesn't mean it won't happen. It, it, some of us have been denied by banks, by people. Mercy. <laughs> I mean, Mercy. we have we have felt denial, have we yeah, not? Yeah. But never denial from Jesus Christ. Amen. That's that's an awesome Amen. thing. Amen. <laughs> you know, you know, it's funny because the, um, when people say that God, you know, t typically has two answers, mm -hmm. you know, or mm -hmm. there's three particular answers. There's one is yes. Yes. One is no, mm. and then one is is wait. Wow. Wait. Um, wait. But I didn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know what? Although we have to wait, guess what? Last hashtag. <laughs> I have the receipts. <laughs> you stand know, on his word. That's right. Yeah. You stand yeah. on his word. So you pick up Genesis Revelation. <laughs> you like, God, I've got the receipt. Exactly. You yes. said in your word yes. that it is mine. Yes. <laughs> you know, one of the things I love about my wife, mm -hmm. um, you know, in terms of her walk with God, mm -hmm. she always holds God accountable. Yes. Yes. You know, she's like, okay, God, you told me to marry this man. That's right. So when things are a little... Yeah, you, yeah, 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 you fix him. <laughs> and I'm telling on myself now. Yeah. You know, when he's acting up, you mm -hmm. know, you, you, you said. That's right. You said. Mm -hmm. So I need to hold you accountable. Hey, so uh, we have the receipts. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You know what? But God, it, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Because God says... I stand behind my word. Yes, yes. I stand behind. Yes. If I said it, I'm going to do it. It's not going to return void. Mm -hmm. And so with that, we know that we can, we can trust God. And we can have the faith yes, to wait. Mm -hmm. Because he says, those who wait upon the Lord shall yes. renew their strength. Mm -hmm. They shall mount up with wings and eagles. Yes. They will run, mm -hmm. and not, but not be weary. That's they right. shall walk and not faint. <laughs> faint. Amen, amen. Mercy. That is awesome. And I'm thanking God for his blessing. I, I actually had to get into the front row to get my seat <laughs> to hear this sermon and make it back to the Praise Cafe just so I can talk with you about how much of a blessing it was for absolutely, me today. Absolutely, yes. absolutely, absolutely. Yes. And I know that you're going to be talking um, with Pastor Snell because yes. I know you had a couple of questions mm -hmm. you know, as, as you, mm -hmm. we were talking uh, yes. behind the stage yes. Yes. That, that you need him to unpack. And as mm -hmm. we look in the chat and as we... We look at those of you who are online. We know that a number of you also may have questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we know that God is good. Yes. We know that God is great. And in fact, you know, as Pastor Snell was saying, there are some of you who may be uh, upset with God. Mm. There are some of you that may be uh, mad at God. That Some of you may have given up on God. But God has not given up on you. Yes. And we want to take some time to pray for you. Yeah. We want to let you know that even though it hasn't happened yet, yes. wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, mm -hmm. and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, we yes. say, wait on the Lord. Yes, yes. So Malcolm, why don't you, you um, pray yes. for, for those yes. who are watching online? Yes, bow your heads with me. Dear Lord, we just want to thank you for your mercy and your grace. And Lord, we want to thank you for our inability, Lord. When we say to you that we are giving you a timeline, Lord, you are so gracious mm. that you patiently wait for us to awaken by the voice of your Holy Spirit. Yes. And Lord, there are people who are listening now who will listen, who will listen to this prayer. And, and there's some of us, Lord, that we want to give up on ourselves yes. because we want to give up on you. Yes. But Lord, you have told us that you love us so much that we can go boldly to your throne, find grace and mercy, Lord, and you're willing to give it to us yes. morning by morning. 
So, Lord, as we wait patiently, infuse us with more of your Holy Spirit so that we can hear your voice, Lord, and let us do our part by infusing ourselves with your word on a daily basis, Lord, so that we can strengthen ourselves so that we can wait patiently, Lord, and give ourselves the timeline to know that you will do it in your time. And we thank you, Lord, and we praise you. In your name we do pray. Amen. 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 I know that, um, you know, as we're waiting for Pastor Snell, we yes. have a, a actually a special guest yes. um, that, mm-hmm. that we want to bring in. Yes, yes. And so um, let, let, let's do a yes. little switch. Well, uh, yeah, musical chair. So I'm, I'm going to slide to my right, your left, and uh, we'll let the guest come in. Okay. So um, as our guest is coming in, as you know, uh, we here at the Oakwood University Church sit on the campus of Oakwood University. And so as such, we try to support the university, you know, in in their endeavors. And there are two times in which we um, uh, close down our church to be able to uh, fellowship uh, as part of the university program. One is during alumni weekend and the other one is graduation. And so we're going to be closing um, our church next week. Now, you can still watch the alumni weekend programs through our uh, platform, uh, through our uh, YouTube and Facebook platforms, but we have with us um, Emil Parker, who is the um, Alumni Alumni Association. No, 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 Alumni Relations. Alumni Relations Director. (laughs) No association here. I know. (laughs) And uh, he's just going to briefly tell us what we can expect next week as far as um, our worship services and our programming. Um, so, Emil, w- welcome to the Praise Cafe. Thank so. you, thank you, thank you. And I'm at the Praise Cafe. I can't believe it. <laughs> this, this is a, a, a crazy thing. Um, but a lot of things we have been planning for our alumni and friends <laughs> for at least nine months. And it's going to be loaded, starting, really starting uh, on Monday. Monday, we're starting with the Entrepreneurship Center. Many students are going to be having programs from Monday to Wednesday. Uh, Mm -hmm. Our theme this year is One Faith, One Oakwood, One Future. And we're just, we're just delighted to have everyone to come. It will be in person and live streamed. Um, we're starting also with Wednesday uh, uh, honors convoca- convocation. And that will start, uh, I believe, at 1045. No, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. here at the church. Ch- okay, excellent, excellent. Oh, right here at OUC. Yes. And then on Thursday, Thursday is a loaded day. WSB, Willing, Succeeding, and Black. Mm-hmm. They're a legendary alumni group that was here expanding 20 years. Yeah, they I, will I, launching. You mm-hmm. remember? I, I was here when they there, were here. There you go. <laughs> um, they will be launching our Alumni 360. They'll be going into the classrooms. They will be pouring into student leadership. Just excited to have them to come mm-hmm. on Thursday, both in the morning and in the evening. Okay. Then on Friday, oh, the loaded Friday, it starts out with all kinds of things. We're launching at 11 o'clock at our kickoff at the Oakwood Farms Market. We're, we're so delighted to have, uh, it's just going to be a different experience. We're going to have a stage experience, as we call it. And you will be able to get giveaways, hear testimonies, find out what the vendors are actually doing. All of that will be on Friday. Then we will also have Alumni 360 events on Friday. Then starting, starting at 615, 615, 615, we will have our Vespers, Vesper service, and none other than uh, Kenneth Manders, Elder Kenneth Manders, mm-hmm. our president of Bermuda Conference, will be our speaker. And uh, you don't want to miss that. Then that flows right into Oakwood Honors. Here's the thing. Celebrating 125 years, we are also celebrating all our presidents, in particular, our five living presidents. Amen. Then... Celebrating 75 years of student leadership, we're celebrating the USM, and we're, we're actually sp- spotlighting the, the last 10 presidents. Pretty excited about that. Then, of course, Mr. Harry Swinton Sr., all his pioneering here on Oakwood campus over the years uh, in, in our industries. Then finally, our Grammy-nominated uh, group, Virtue, will also be honored on Friday night. Then on Sabbath morning, that's all at OUC, but then on Sabbath morning, we will be at the Von Braun 
After three years, we've been separated from the Von Braun and ourselves. We will be worshiping there with our Sabbath school at 915. That will be the class of 1982 presenting there. And then also at 1045, we will start our divine worship service. You don't want to miss that because we'll have the Aeolian singing. Our speaker that morning will be Dr. G. Alexander Bryant, uh, NAD president and our board chair. He's going to bring a powerful message that morning, so you don't want to miss that, both in person and live stream. So if you choose to stay home, which we hope you don't, uh, you can also see it on live stream. Then also that evening, we will have at, uh, at 530, we will have the memories, the reunion memories mm -hmm. program. That's with all our twos and sevens that we're honoring. Those classes of the twos and sevens we will be honoring. It will be a video, video pr production at 530. Then at 615, we will have our Sabbath Vesper. Sabbath Vesper will be our speaker, Darnisha Thomas. Pastor Darnisha Thomas, okay. she will be with us. Then at, at exactly right after that, the anticipated El Oakwood Aeolian concert uh, under uh, Jason Ferdinand, Dr. Jason Ferdinand. Then on Sunday, it's great. You want to see that. The Vendor Village will be out there. We'll have giveaways, all kinds of things, Alumni 360. Oh, forgot, fireworks Saturday night. You don't want to miss that. Uh, and then, of course, on Sunday, you will have uh, the Vendor Village and then uh, uh, all the other events. USM is having a reception at the silos, 75 years celebrating USM history. And then uh, there's just so much more. We want to encourage you to plug in come. I think all the hotels are full. Sorry about that. Uh, but we're anticipating uh, all of you all to come back to your Oakwood. You've been missing it. We've been missing you. So um, just very quickly as, as we close, um, how can people find out about the information? Whew. Thank you for that reminder. Uh, you can go directly to the Office of Alumni Relations site, and that's alumni.oakwood. Dot edu. You will get the full schedule, all the things I didn't mention. All right. Thank you, Emil, for <laughs> that. Uh, we're going to do a little switcheroo again. Um, Pastor Snell is here. Um, we we, we want to hear from him. Uh, he has some exciting news for us, and I know there's some questions that, that uh, we have. So I'm going to switch with um, uh, Dr. Taylor. Again, we're not meeting here as a church in terms of worship next Sabbath but we will be back here at the Oakwood University Church on uh, April the 23rd, and I will see you then. All right, come on. Hey, 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 hey. We're back. We're back. What's good, Chief? Preacher. How you feeling, man? <laughs> good, man. How are you feeling? Man, I'm, I'm all right, man. Yes, I'm yes. excited. I'm excited. <laughs> are you all right? Yeah. I had to come out and get my front row seat, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you see this coat in yeah, the yeah. camera. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, Doc Taylor be right there on the front, man. Yes, he, he don't yes, want to miss any yes. of it, man. Got to give my call and response, man, because yeah. this brother is bringing it every Sabbath. I don't know if you felt the power of the Holy Spirit but you are bringing it, preacher. Man, to, to God be the glory. I, mm. I came front, man. I, mm. I, I love it. I, you know, it's so funny, man. Mm. I be pacing the floor early yes. in the morning, mm -hmm. Sabbath morning. Mm -hmm. I, I be, as the old folk would say, I hold my mule yes. uh, just, to, just to kind of mm -hmm. wait for 11, 30, 12 o'clock to get here, man. So uh, I'm excited because, you know, one of the, the best preaching environments is not necessarily just to a loud environment, mm. but to people who are hungry for the word. And like right now in the Oakwood Breath of Life community, there is just this hunger for the word, even like to the point that we have thousands of people tuning in Sunday morning, Monday morning, Tuesday, mm -hmm. Wednesday, and it doesn't even matter who's sharing. That's how you know that there is just a hunger for the word. And what that do, does is it excites me and it makes me even more uh, anxious to get here to share the word. Yes, so. yes. And I, I've got several questions for you. Because okay, yeah, yeah. What you said in your sermon was very powerful don't give God a timeline, mm -hmm. but that hunger, help some of us who are online listening now, mm -hmm. how do I cultivate my hunger? Like, yeah. I might feel the hunger pain, sure. but how do I work with that 
and you know how we look at someone who's plugged in with the spirit. Mm -hmm. How can I get what he has? Yeah. So, so not from a selfish or envious standpoint. Yeah. How can I work this hunger and 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 plug into what you're giving us each Sabbath? Yeah. So you know the Bible says, "Oh, taste and see." Yes. That the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. So like that that word, it actually is almost kind of like the word. It almost means sample. Yes. So you know how it is oh, when you like you that. go to to Costco mm -hmm. or to Sam's mm -hmm. and they have the the sample person. Mm -hmm. And the belief is that if you just get a little bit of this, mm -hmm. that you're gonna go buy and you you're gonna go buy the whole package. Mm -hmm. Or if you get a, a few samples of these cashews, you're gonna go buy the whole box. Mm -hmm. And see, one of the things I need us to understand that even yes. with everything earthly, mm. everything earthly, after you consume a certain volume of it you get sick of it. Mm. God or his presence is the only thing that if no matter how much you consume, mm -hmm. it never, ever, you never become, it just, you become more and more insatiable. Yes. So the one thing I want to encourage everybody to do, as we talked about Psalm 1611 says that in your presence mm. is fullness, fullness of joy fullness. at his right hand is pleasures forevermore, evermore. Every other pleasure you seek, mm. Every other joy you're trying to pursue, yes, it is a far counterfeit. It is, it is a distant second place yes. to the joy and fulfillment that we find in Jesus Christ. Yes. So number one, you got to seek his presence. Mm -hmm. You got to seek his word. Mm -hmm. Because again, what, what you know, sampling his word does is it just creates more and more desire yes. for the word. Yes. And then this thing I want to say, and this is critical to kind of like the, the, the pandemic church culture. Mm -hmm. This is why it's critical that you remain active in ministry and service, mm -hmm. because this is one of the things I'll, I know is that even, you know, you can get all this word, you can get all this good music, you can get into all this Bible study. Yeah. But if you don't have an outlet for service, yes. after some point, you'll begin to lose appreciation and value for it. Mm -hmm. So as you as you are filled, mm -hmm. you've got to give. And so there's a reciprocity mm -hmm. where I'm giving, I'm getting so that I can give. I'm empty so I can be restored. Okay, okay. We're going to revisit that yeah. with that reciprocity piece where I give back. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned something about Pentecost. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. Now, <laughs> we, we had a lot of listeners who yeah. heard that, but mm -hmm. some may not be as familiar. Sure. But with that introduction of Pentecost, what are we as, as, as parishioners in this place? What, what should we expect with this Pentecost? So, so remember, you know, from the day Jesus was resurrected, mm -hmm. um, you know, till, you know, what we call the day of Pentecost. Yes. Now, we associate Pentecost with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But actually what Pentecost was, it was a harvest festival mm -hmm. when, you know, the kind of the first bl blades of wheat began yes. to kind of break yes. the ground. And so essentially kind of, you know, there were 50 days between, you know, Passover and Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And so basically what we said was, okay, you know, one of the things that we specifically have began praying for is for the Holy Spirit. Now, the reason we're praying for the Holy Spirit in, in an unrealistic way, Ellen White makes a statement, is that when we receive the Holy Spirit, every other blessing flows in its train. So, so what's happening is we're praying for this, praying for that, praying for the other. But no, if we receive the fullness of the Holy Ghost. I'm feeling that. Every other blessing mm -hmm. flows in its train. Mm -hmm. So like this is where we're, we're beginning to shift and pivot. So as we're praying unrealistic prayers, our chief unrealistic petition mm -hmm. is for, man, a fresh fire baptism mm. of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And if I receive him in his fullness, because mm. remember Joel 2.28 says in the latter days, mm. I'm going to pour out my spirit on all, all flesh. flesh. Sons and daughters, male servants and female servants. So if we are that last day generation, one of the things that we ought to be anticipating in an unrealistic way is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. So we say, listen, we're going to go 50 days, Pentecost, and, and we're not believing it's just going to be poured out on the 50th day. We believe it's just going to be completed on mm. the 50th day because the spirit is being poured out. Yes, I'm experiencing it. I know you're experiencing yep. it. It is happening. Yes. You just got to make sure you're aligning yourself and positioning yourself so that by the 50th day, you've been able to have your cup filled. That's right. To overflow. That's right. That's right. So you're saying a lot of things, preacher. And when you say position ourselves mm -hmm. and then that reciprocity, yeah. how can I, people who are listening, people who are, are in this church, mm -hmm. how can I be a part of this? How, how can you tell me to work myself into this thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So each and every morning, especially for those who are new, mm -hmm. just go to our Oakwood University Church YouTube page mm -hmm. or Facebook page. 
Same thing, the Breath of Life YouTube page or Facebook page. What you're going to be a part of is our early morning prayer services. Mm -hmm. Every Sab Saturday and Sunday morning at 8 o'clock a.m., mm -hmm. half hour to 45 minutes of just power, where we're in the Word, we're praying. We're, we're having other folks praying with us. Mm -hmm. We're hearing testimonies. And Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. So each and every day, like, there is a word to instruct your heart. But then there's also embedded in it instruction for how you can go out and be impactful in your neighborhood, in your community. Mm, amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, I appreciate that, preacher. Yeah. I, I, I know it, I, we've got some Q&As that we just did. Yeah, but we've yeah. got some announcements, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I don't know if there's any important announcements you want to share with the audience. Sure. Just, so just a reminder, this Wednesday, what we're going to be talking about specifically is last day faith. Mm -hmm. Remember, Jesus asked the question, man, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith in the earth? Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at ancient Babylon and look at the tensions that we're going to be dealing with as we, we, we as we deal with apocalyptic Babylon. Yes. So, again, we, we're not going to be able to get all the last days into one message. But there are some things that I really wanted to share, especially as we're in this series, Unrealistic. Mm -hmm. Then we just want to encourage you, friends of mine, like if what we're doing here at Breath of Life is helpful, if it's impactful, we ask that you would support us in three ways. Number one, we ask for your prayers for Breath of Life. Would you just, all the prayer warriors, would you just write it down? Pastor Snell, the Breath of Life ministry, put it on your prayer list. Would you call it out before God each yeah. and every day? Mm -hmm. Then we ask that you would help us by just spreading the word. Like just be, as we say each and every week, be an Apple apostle, be an electronic yes. evangelist. Like even this message that you receive, listen, if you know this is going to bless somebody that's in the wait, send that link to them on YouTube, share it with them, mention mm -hmm. them on Facebook so they can get access to the word. And then we ask that you would give to Breath of Life uh, right there on your screen or a number of ways that you can give. You can go online right now to breathoflife.tv. You can give online. That's not breaking the Sabbath. If you can right. go and give online. We give our gifts online each and every Sabbath. Or you can give by mail uh, to P.O. Box 5960, Huntsville, Alabama, 35814. Or you can give by phone. You can call in, 256-929-6460. Right now, listen, if this has been a blessing to you, this has added any value to your life, you can give through Cash App at dollar sign, Breath of Life TV, or you can give via text, give 3 B O L T V or 188-364-GIVE. All this is going to do is help us fill up the internet streams and the airwaves with the glad tidings of yes. salvation. I need you to know that the Breath of Life ministry is already in a number of places. Like we're on the Word Network, on 3ABN, mm -hmm. on the Hope Channel. We're in Birmingham. We're in Atlanta. We're in Huntsville. We're in some other places. But guess what? We got to keep on pushing. Amen. And as you keep giving, it allows us to be able to create new platforms in order to be able to share the good news of salvation. So we ask for your continued prayers and your partnership. Yes, yes. And we'll be praying for the viewers. And uh, I don't know, preacher, do we need to pray our way out of this? Yeah, yeah. Like you go yes. ahead and close it out with prayer yes, as, yes. As, we, as we wrap it up. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, and uh, Monday 6, Tuesday 6, Wednesday 6, and then Wednesday night at 7 a.m. Man, listen, it's, it's a smorgasbord. I mean, it's, it is a bazaar <laughs> of the word. Like there's no famine for it the is. word. It is. Position yourself to get it. It is. And you yeah. have to get some of what we're getting. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Lord, we just want to thank you so much for this Sabbath day and the blessing that you have and have given us. And Lord, we ask that everyone who has heard this, Lord, just jump in two feet, Lord, and, and, and just ask for your blessing, your mercy, and your grace. Save us all when you come. Amen. 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 God bless you. Yes.